Hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello. 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 How is everybody doing today? Oh, it's been a... It's been a... Been a... It's been a half hour. Damn. I, uh... Got this mouse. See how it's full of holes. Turns out those holes are really good. For liquid to pour through. And, uh... Yeah, that's exactly what happened. Yeah, I've, I've put a little, uh... Well, a picture of whole kerfuffle that went down. Uh, yeah, th this is this is this is me. Like twenty minutes ago, blow drying, blow drying my own mouse to try and get all the liquid out of it. Isn't me or does it sound bad? It's just you. <laughs> um, I don't know. Is it? Is it me? My mic is on. I need to double check. Let me. Let me see. I'll check the I'll check my own stream. Check what the sound quality is like. If we go back live. Let's have a listen. Is it even playing? Oh my speaker. Helps if the stream plays, you know? Yeah man. Yeah, sound the it's it's it sounds all right on my end as well. Um, yeah, it might be something going on with your headphones there. Um, sorry. Um, but yeah, poured an entire pint of cherry Pepsi all over my mouse. Went through all the holes. Yeah, and it went onto my seat. It went onto my lap. I ended up having to change my shorts. My seat now has a wet patch, so it looks like I've wet myself. It's just uh, not a good time to be alive. It's, uh, sad times. Very sad times. But we're here. We're streaming a little bit late as per usual. But hopefully this time uh, we're not going to have any interference by some some winds, some straw, some straws, some storms. And yeah, let's just see. Um, <laughs> we love the pink hairdryer. But yeah, hopefully, hopefully the internet's not going to be too bad today. Hopefully. So do let me know if we, if there ever gets to a point where the, where the, the stream is acting up or it's, it's a bit slow. Let me know. We'll see if there's anything that we can get done. Um, but I guess without further ado, some hearts in the chat there, and we'll uh, we'll get on with some level design. How about that, huh? Imagine us doing some work. Is this going to be the first stream where we actually get some work done? Very good question. I'd love to know the answer. Guess we'll find out in like two to three hours. We'll look back at the progress we've made, and we'll go from there. So, 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 so. Currently, we've got this area and this area, including this bit. I want to at least have outlined a couple more of the other zones. Hello, hello. Hello. How is everybody doing? How What, what have you all done today? Enough about me. Enough about me and my my mishaps and my my shenanigans. What have you guys been up to? Tell me all. Tell me about your lives. While I try and figure out what the hell I'm doing. Uh, I just woke up. Ooh. Is that like a... You've you've lay in bed super, super late? Or um, is it just that time of day for you? Where... What kind, what what time is it actually for you? Because right now it's about half past three in the afternoon. I'm working on randomizing cabinets. Dynam. Never missing a beat. Always here, right at the beginning of the stream. Crazy, as per usual. Uh, randomizing cabinets. Damn. <laughs> I'm just imagining like all these taxes flying everywhere, these documents flying around everything. 
Amazing. Unity has crashed three try three times due to never-ending loops in my randomization code. It's been rough. That that is rough. Of all things, cabinets as well. Who'd have thought? Ironically enough, a filing system would be causing you so much stress and crashes. It's 9 a.m. Damn. So that's kind of like America side of um, uh, the American side of the world, I, I'm presuming. If it's nine o'clock for you, that's not that. Is that right? Yeah, I think it's, it's, a, it's like between like six to eight hours behind, give or take, isn't it? Pretty sure. I'm having breakfast. Wow. Just like you. I'm designing a map for my game. Ooh, what kind of a game? Oh, actually, I think I've seen your game. Yes, yes, I uh, literally, I was just like, oh, just instinctively like asking, oh, what is it? And then I see your name. I'm just like, wait, no, I know this game. I know this game. Yeah, the other Metroidvania, my competition. I see how it is. <laughs> very, very nice. How's it been going? How's it been going for you? And uh, I've tried spawning random. I've tried spawning a random event in my game yesterday, and forgot to change the variable to close the loop that spawned the NPCs. Let's just say I spawned hundreds of NPCs and crashed my server. Day in the life of a game developer. If you're not like spawning a bazillion things and just destroying your computer, are you doing it right? You know, you have no enemies. <laughs> I'd like to think so. I would like to think I don't have any enemy and having a blah, blah, blah. as you can words words are hard today the words are very hard I had a very stressful day at work this morning it was just I it, stressful isn't the word it wasn't stressful it was just annoying it's working hey we've got some random cabinets going see all you have to do is just jump into my stream and everything works you know Everything works while you're in my stream. Unless you're me. Because I'm not working. Because I'm speaking to you. Um, standard stuff. You know. We, we we move. We move. Not forward. In, in some cases backwards. But at least you get stuff done. If anything. By the end of the stream. We can say that work has been done. By Dynam. Sounds good. Sounds good to me. That's an accomplishment. Um, then why doesn't my life work? Ooh, throwing down, throwing down. Honestly, if only there was an answer to that question. Like, what is the meaning of life? Why are things not going well? Why can't life be easy? And I think it's a good thing that life is hard. Life is difficult because it, it's, it's all character building, you know? It's not a struggle, it's character building. You're programming your own NPC. You know, you're defining certain traits. You're closing the loops in your code. You're sporting a bazillion of yourself. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, your visuals look good. Thank you. The visuals look better when the post-processing is involved. And we get the blur and things like that. Again, I didn't prepare myself with my key with my controller. Let's go. Thing. But I, I, I'm, I'm happy with how the visuals are coming along. I need to add more in interactive objects and such. Um, maybe some tall grass that moves as you walk past but you can't destroy. Like We've got these ferns and I've programmed them in such a way that I can just change the sprite pretty easily. I can change the sprite and the particle effect that comes off. So I can make like a lamppost for example. Like if I, put, if I pull this up... Um, I've got the fern. The core system is what I use for like instantiating... Just the, my, my core system, it's kind of made by Barden, but I've kind of expanded upon it. I can attach this to basically anything that I want to have health or instantiate things or have any kind of physics or anything like that. I've basically got a set of components I can attach to this core and it will just generate the code by default. It's, re it's a really useful system to have. So say, for example, I want to create something and I want it to have health rather than programming something that's like a health script and making it work in the context of this. I literally just attach a core core component and it just works. Happy days. 
Because then all I have to do to get anything to work in regards to that core component is uh, reference it. It's great. Um, as soon as this loads, I'll be able to show you that. Yeah, so literally, like, put a public reference, private setter and getter. Um, in the awake, just, like, get the component in children, because that is, of course, where the core component is. It's a child of whatever object I'm actually working on. Um, and then I can literally, if I want to decrease the health, it's literally just core.stats, because, as you can see here, I ass it from the core. I've attached the stats component. I've also got an instantiation. So this allows me to, if I want to, just drag and drop different um, effects into this array. Uh, into these arrays and I can name them within the actual script itself um, so I could be like core dot instantiation and then I can attach like um, certain prefabs I've got it defined here or the location um, but I've got a bunch of other core components as well um, that I can like easily just add on so I could come along and just create an empty and let's call this movement for example because uh, I've got a core component for movement Boom. I attach this. I can now just like make this object move if I want to through code. So I could come along and just say, um, I don't know. Let's say instead of damaging it and instantiating an object and doing that, let's just comment all that out. Let's do core dot movement. It's all there now. Dot uh, flip. Just purely hypothetically, right? So now when I attack this, <laughs> this brush, it should just flip. Because I've got all this stuff like set up baseline. Um, the perks of just like forethought when when programming. So if I hit this, it should flip this. No, of course. Of course it's... Oh, wait. Did I not save? I know I did save. Um, serialized field. What's this? Uh, object not set to an instance of an object. Attack clone. What? What is not, uh, what is not doing? What is not doing? Oh, is it because the movement script needs, I think the movement script needs a rigid body and all that kind of stuff. Maybe. That would make sense. Like, if I change this to, so let's actually just change this real quick. Um... Yeah, I think I need to attach a, a rigid body if I'm going to have a core component as well. Let me double check on the player core. Uh, movement. Uh, and then the player itself will have a rigid body. Capsule collider. I'm not 100% sure if that's actually what I need to do, but let's add the rigid body anyway. Um, let's just set it to be like... Zero, zero, zero... This is like a complete, like, the, I'm not going to be doing any of this. So it's like, this is almost pointless. But let's just see if this fixes the issue. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, it wasn't even this one. It was this one I added. There we go. I was just hitting the wrong bush. There we go. Yeah, th now if I hit it, it will flip the sprite. I was like, I, I was doing all the customization effects to this bush. And then attacking this and then wondering why it wasn't working. Of course it wasn't because like... I was doing everything for this. But yeah, like that's the roundabout, like easy way of fixing everything in that regard. Um, so yeah, fun stuff. Fun stuff. Um, did a, a few days ago, I was thinking about adding an Easter egg with Amber's Tales. So at some point, I was going to ask you if there was no problems. Oh, that'd be awesome. Um, it's a night method, but be careful. Unity has an issue or a bug where having too many child objects causes low performance on lowered computers. True. That's why I uh, segment everything. Um, like, ultimately, I, I do nest all these things within certain objects. But when it comes to the final actual release, um, or when I'm actually going to be setting up the demo, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a little script. And I've kind of already got one that's basically at the beginning, right at the beginning, is going to de-child everything within certain things. So everything that needs to be a child of something um, will remain so. But like any any objects like these that are just acting as folders, for want of a better word, um, I'm literally just going to attach a script that's going to de-parent everything um, when the game loads. So it'll help with performance in that regard. So it's not going to be too much of a concern. Um, but again, I'll only really do that if it becomes an issue um and right now it isn't 
Um, but when I do potentially make bigger, bigger kind of zones and such, it might be something I have to look into. But there's a solution there in place if needs be. So it'll be an easy enough fix. Um, but yeah, with regards to the Easter egg, that'd be super cool. That'd be super, super cool. Um, you could put like a little amber, amber, like resting or a little campsite or something or something like that. That'd be, that'd be pretty sick. Um, we also need to tag, we also need to tag or something in the hierarchy to organize all game job, <laughs> all the game objects. Yeah. I mean, I, I definitely abuse tags so much. Like, I've got tags for all sorts. I, as I say, it's like everything in, <laughs> in the immediate thing is like untagged. But for example, I've got like certain tags for things that are like damageable, but not pogoable. Some that are like damageable, but you can pogo. So th these boxes, for example, right? If I attack them like such. So if I attack them while in midair, right, it just damages them. It doesn't do anything, right? But if I come along and change this so it's damage pogoable, in theory, I should be able to, like, I, I say, in theory, I should be able to pogo that. I'm presuming it was just because the tag wasn't set beforehand. So if, let me let me click this. In theory, I should be able to pogo this now. That's when my code just doesn't work and I become, like, depressed. Okay, it's not even why. Okay, that's something I need to fix. That's going on my list of issues. I mean, it's lucky that the, the one I need it to be works properly. Uh, okay, let me add that to my list. That needs to be updated. <laughs> Game dev, everybody. Game dev, welcome. Uh, I was thinking about putting some scenes of Amber running on the background. That could also be a cool one. Kind of like a mini cinematic of her just running across the screen or something. That could be cool. That could be very cool. Because our games look quite similar, don't they? You, um... Yeah. Our games look pretty similar, if I remember. Because you do the same kind of technique I do with the with the shadows, if I, if I am remembering correctly. Yes, using the lighting. It's such it's such an easy way of getting it sorted, isn't it? So much better than having to hand draw the shadows on every single pix on every single asset. I love it so much. Um alrighty, let's crack on with a bit of uh level design. So, first and foremost, I think I'm just gonna set up uh this one. Let's just create this room. So that we have a room. And then we'll we'll go from there. So we'll close the setup. Level canvases. Okay, this is scene two. Where is... I'm pretty sure I've got a zone one scene three. So let's add this additively. Um, I'm actually thinking... Because I was going to have zone three um, initially be this one. Uh, but this is going to be... If I'm doing it, I'm going to try... I want to try to keep some semblance of organization. So I'll have zone one be the tutorial zone. So I'll be one, two, three, four, five. And then this will be the cutoff point for like the next zone of sorts. Uh, do you have any plans of replacing yourself with a super advanced robot AI game developer? <laughs> Something cool with sunglasses. <laughs> I mean... I, I do use AI for certain bits and bobs, um, but no, I don't really want to. I don't really want to like completely replace myself. <laughs> ultimately, because um, it's kind of it, like how what a what Quevel Cop is doing, isn't it? Uh, is he still doing that? I'm not, I'm still not 100 sure. I haven't been keeping up with it, Quevel Cop, because he's he's hard leaned into the AI stuff, hasn't he? Quevel Cop, is he, are they still doing that? Or has he got a different channel now for that? Um, I can't remember. I don't know. I'd have to. I'd have to find that kind of stuff. But yeah, like making a full on like AI like webcam and all that kind of stuff, and just could you imagine? Jesus. But no, no, I don't want to do that. I like. I like being a bit more personable with it. I like the fact that I'm just like, I'm just your average Joe. Like, I'm just a guy who 
procrastinates massively. Like, I'm literally documenting my procrastination, essentially. <laughs> like, if I'm going to procrastinate and get no work done, may as well get some content out of it, you know? Um, yeah, you made me overhaul. You made that overhaul technique, and I love it. Nice. Yeah, I ended up doing a complete overhaul of my graphics when I did that. Um, I think it's just smart. It's just work smart and not harder, you know? Like, I could, like, completely overhaul all my assets, but why should I do that when I can just be like, wee, and it work? Happy days. Um, the only issue with the technique is, obviously, if you've got other lighting sources, it can kind of fuck with it a little bit. Um, oh, I need to, like, stop swearing. I, I, I really need to get a handle on it. I swear accidentally so much. It's just part of my, like, natural vocabulary. I, I need, it's, but when I'm live, at least, I just, I need to stop swearing. Oh well. Um, but yeah. Let's crack on. So, with the Ida in mind, this, this whole section here needs to move. Ooh. Oh yeah, we've got the lights as well. So let's just move everything, actually. So if you move everything. So it's going to be like up here, right? This will be kind of the space for it. Like that. Um, I'll be okay for while the throne calls me. <laughs> Man's pooping. Man's going for some poops. Um, and has the lights moved as well? Yes, they have. Beautiful. Uh, let's just bring these up so slightly as well. Okay. So, first things first. Before we do anything whatsoever... We need to make sure that we can actually transition to the scene properly. Luckily, I have some scripts for that. So let's lay down just a little bit of ground so we can actually walk and interact with the with the different scenes. So we've got zone one, scene three. Uh, we're in the mid ground, ground, ground call. Here we go. So let's connect this up. There we are. Um, I guess in theory it should be like down here, shouldn't it? Oh, I'm going to have to level that out. Because um, I moved it improperly, didn't I? Damn, I'm a stupid. Or in fact, actually, I don't need to... I don't need to do all of that. Let me just go onto the ground. That's at 0, 0, 0. 0, 0, 0. 0, 0, 0. It should just be this. I just need to... 0 that, right? Um, and then I can move all the components because they'll be up. Where are they? Oh, they're over here again. Why are they over here? Environment. Oh, let's zero all these out as well. So now they should be up here. Cool. Um, so the actual components are the things that I need to be moving. So the ground, for example. That doesn't actually need to move. I should just be able to come in and paint the tiles on and they'll be accurate now. Right? There we go. There we are. That's what we wanted. We need to make sure that they're properly in line. Um, so let's just extend this out ever so slightly. Um, bring, we'll add a little bit of a ceiling just so we can see what's going on. Um... Don't need to worry about the grass right now. Uh, we'll move all the backgrounds. So let's just come up. Now these can be moved a little bit more freely. We're not as worried about them being so rigid or conform to the grid. Hello, how's it going? And games, it's going well. Look, as you can see, we're actually doing some work this time. We're actually cracking on and doing some actual work. Uh, <laughs> so it's going pretty well. Uh, we're, we're just working on this this area right now. Um, just We're just going to get the scene transitioning set up just so we can make sure that it actually works. Um, and once we've got that up and running, um, I don't know, I guess we'll start flushing out and, and just making the actual areas themselves. Because even though we do have the actual outline of, kind of the area itself... We have to figure out what kind of platforming elements are going to be within them. So we'll be we'll be having a tinkle, having a play around with those kind of things, and it should be all fun and games. How's it going with you? What have you been up to? How's I don't actually know how to pronounce your game. Is it Awita? Awita? 
Awita? I forget. Um. Uh, Awita. Awit. Awita? So, uh, is it A, Awita, or B, Awita? Or C, none of the above? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yes. You are correct. Um alrighty. So within this we just need to get a need to get an object. Portals. That's what I need to set up now. Um also within this separate one. Uh within the second scene, I need to where is ground there is ground i need to delete these so we can actually walk to the next area craziness i know um and then within this it'll be within portal no, within prefabs level level portals portal left let's drag that there um and i'll need my thingamajobs there we go so portal left that can go like I don't know, there. And then we need a portal right. Ooh, actually, that is in the right one. Yeah. Objects. Portals. Portal left. Uh, let's just update that to be top. Like so. Uh, and then portal right is going to go in here. So, portals. Portal right will go there. And that needs to be under that. Okay, now. Now, 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 now. When we're in portal... When we're in this one, we're in zone 1, scene 3. We need to go to zone 1, scene 2, funnily enough. Um, and this is going to be... Position 2. Because this one's position one. Yes. Okay, so this is going to spawn to portal two. Uh, and the current portal position is... Uh, I've forgotten how to actually set... I've forgotten how I set up my actual original script myself. Um, spawn point. That's fine. Top this one. So we've got these two. Uh, this loads into zone 3, or in this case, let's drag that in. There we go. Spawn, portal to spawn 2 will be this, which is spawn to portal 2. And current scene, this is portal position 1. So then this needs to spawn to portal position 1 in this scene, and this is portal position 2 because this is portal position 1. And that should work. I think that's all I should have to do. So let's save that. And let's jump in. Um, it's going well trying to remake the inventory system a bit. Ooh, yeah, because you've got some like survival-ish um, systems in your game, don't you? After working on the like the the UI element related bits for um for Amber's Tail and the whole skill tree. I couldn't imagine making an inventory system. Oh my goodness. Hey! At the very least, we're in the right scene. Um, but, oh yeah, it just hasn't set, because I, I haven't set the camera bounce properly. It actually, the, the actual things worked. Uh, your, was just reading the catalyst read. Did you have another server issue? Um, server issue? What do you mean by server issue? Um, like with the actual, uh, with the live stream. Not that, I don't think anything's gone wrong with the live stream. I think, um, I think uh, Forgotten was just having uh, some issues with their with their headphones potentially. Um, but uh, with the stream, no. I, in theory, the the stream should be okay. Um, in theory, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully it stays that way. Um, but we'll we'll have to wait and see. Um, but yeah, everything seems to go. In, everything seems to go in fine so far. So fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Um, let's come along and set up the camera stuff. 
so main area is uh, not there. Where is this currently set up, the main area? So we can move that down. As this is going to be why half the stuff wasn't working. So we'll just align this with the edge here. And just for my own sanity, because it's annoying me, I'm going to come along and we're just going to adjust the light here so we can see the ground when we're actually in the level. How about that? Doesn't that sound nice? Um, so yeah, let's, let's have a gander. So when you come into the camera, so we'll have this main one. Uh, this is going to be the only one that should be enabled, which is true. Um, it's aligning with the main area, which is true. Um, it is following this camera object, which is true. Um, let's also just bring the camera object a little bit closer, just for my insanity. Is this the player? It is sound let's move the player just so they're a little bit there so the i have a player a version of the player in every single scene so no matter which scene i spawn into like i'm always just able to start anywhere um hang on let me just order some dinner ah i've got another fly flying around me Ugh. don't like that no worries take your time my friend take your time uh, oh my goodness we've got 17 people watching <laughs> whoop 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 We've got 17 people. Hello. This is like the most people I've had in, ha had in the stream at any given time. How are we all doing? Oh, we got some hearts in the chat. Ah, oh, some some hearts. Woo! Um, How are we all doing? How is everyone? What is new in the world? What is new in your life? Do you make games? Do you not make games? What's going on? Um, Are the controls to Amber's Tale similar to Hollow Knight? Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, For the most part. Like, I've got some slight variants um, in bits, but generally speaking, I'm going to be setting up, like, it's not going to be in the demo. Oh, yeah, I've got a bunch of stuff, like, open. One second, let me just uh, unload, save. There we go. Um, for the most part, it's pretty similar. But in after I've completed the demo, I'm going to be working on a, um, a keybind system for the settings, just so you can kind of customize it how you want. But for the most part, you've got your general jump, uh, variable jump height, naturally. Um, to dash, you press the right trigger, or to roll as well, because you've got the roll if you're on the ground, and you've got dash if you're in the air. That's the right trigger. Um, if you're airborne, you will hit right bumper in order to do the slam. Um, attack is your X button, um, as it as it is in kind of anything, really. Um, and that's about all the controls I have. Uh, the only difference being to pause the game, you press start, and select for the menu systems, which I think is pretty much the same as Hollow Knight. Um, as far as I'm concerned. Um, and also technically on keyboard and mouse, it is also bound to what Hollow Knight is using Z, X, and C um, for the various inputs. So Z being jump, X being attack, and C being the roll slash dash. Um, I'm not very good with the whole um, keyboard and mouse shenanigans though. Um, but ultimately, I'm gonna I'm gonna allow it to be flexible because just because I play a certain way doesn't mean I should uh, force everyone else to. Because the way I play is probably incorrect. Hi, I'm new here. I just wanted to see some game dev on a Metro and uh, and I can't see the whole message. Um, hi, I'm new here and wanted to see some game dev and a Metroidvania looks interesting. Thank you. And uh, yeah. Game dev is cool. We like game dev. Um, yeah, the we're currently doing a bit of level design at the moment, so we're we're cracking on. We're we've got a bit of a plan here. Um, so we, we've got this scene made and this scene made, and uh, yeah, we're working on Amber's Tale, Amber's Tale, which is yeah this action Metroidvania where oh, I just pressed play. It's gonna crash. Yep, there we go. Uh, basically, the whole premise of my game is it's it's basically Hollow Knight in essence because Hollow Knight is just a good standard to go by. Um, but there's a lot more player agency. You get to choose the order in which you unlock abilities via a skill tree rather than having a predetermined linear path. Hell yeah! Also, the game is pixel art, but not really pixel art. Like it, it's not that it's not really pixel art. It is a pixel art game, very well and truly. Um, but I don't conform to the pixel grid. 
if that makes sense. Like, everything can move freely. It's not, conf it's not like, rigid to the pixel, to the pixel grid. Uh, wait, the interact button is E. That's actually a difficult button to reach when playing on a keyboard. Exactly. So it'll probably be F by default, most likely. Um, I think that would be, like, if I'm using, like, ZXC as the main kind of combos for that, um, F will probably be what I'd use to interact in, in those kind of situations. Um, I think. Oh, shit. I actually haven't bound the, the, the main attack, the, the slam attack either, so I need to do that. Oh, when you completely miss. Fun times. Um, so I actually need to set up the whole, like, rebind system. Oh, I actually got it. No. Also, I've been, whenever I've been doing some play tests, so, so currently, when you're, um, when you, when you're damaged and you're blinking, you can't attack. I hate that. I actually really dislike that. I thought it'd make it, it would be like a balance change. Like if you're invulnerable, like it's too busted. If you're able to attack when you're like invulnerable yourself, I absolutely hate it. I just feel useless as soon as they take damage. It's like, well, for like a second, I just can't do anything. So I think I'm gonna change that. I think I'm gonna change that. Um, I honestly I like 2D games because they seem to have more personality. How difficult is how difficult is E to reach? Um, I mean, cur the current key bindings are as such, so I'd be holding these and then using my other hand for, like, the arrow keys generally. Um, E is a bit of a stretch. It's not, like, it's easy enough to get, but it's not a comfortable thing to do, which I think is the whole point. Like, that's not a comfortable thing to have to do, um, but, like, pressing F, that's a small movement. It's easy enough. You're not straining your finger. We're not forcing, like, repetitive strain disorder on anyone. Um, so yeah. Uh, oh, get a bunch of comments. Look at this. Um, if your middle finger is on W. Oh no, because yeah, you, do, you don't use W, A, S, and D. You'd use the arrow keys with your left hand and then Z, X, and C for like jump, attack, and dash. So in that situation, uh, E is a bit unattainable. Uh, but I, I haven't made it E. It's going to be F. Um, Danon was pretty much just mentioning the fact that E is generally the standard for interact buttons. Um, but in my case, it'll most likely be F or V. Um, but at the end of the day, I'm going to make it such that you can bind it however you want. So it doesn't really matter. Um, but yeah. At the, bottom of, at the bottom of the level, the background is very good. But at the top of the level, where there is a lack of anything in the background, it's making it very bland. What do you plan to put there? So... Up here, um, it's extremely kind of noticeable in, in this scene, purely because I haven't actually um, set up the background properly. Um, one of the biggest, the, the, the biggest point you can kind of like, I can show you to kind of describe that is um, up here. If I jump, um, you can see at the top, the background just disappears. Um, the, the main way I'm going to kind of combat, I mean, the quick band-aid fix, let's just say. I can do that now. I can do the band-aid fix right now for you. Uh, let's set this to 2D. And we want the backmost. We want the backmost one. Uh, which is... Doo -doo 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 -doo. Background far. Uh, sprites. This one? No. This one. Yes. There we go. Um, in essence, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make it bigger. Uh, no. Is it going to have to be this? Yes, there we go. The background is going to be a lot bigger. Um, number of reasons for that. First of all, mountains are actually just really big. Um, so that will straight away kind of combat the main issue of like the background being a bit less detailed. Um, because you'll see a bit of the mountain in the background. There is also going to be a lot of like, there's going to be more trees and such up here. So it will distract from that. You're not going to see as much of the background. Um... Uh, as you can currently, because there's got all these trees and stuff. I could literally just copy and paste them up, um, but I want to properly, properly lay it out. But yeah, there'll be a lot more foliage and such here that's going to distract from it. Um, we're also going to be adding certain particle effects. There, there'll be stuff hanging down from the ceiling, so you're not going to see all that much of the background. Another thing I can also do is just kind of take these, uh, duplicate them, and move them up there. Um, and most of that will be masked behind the behind the trees as well, so you're not going to see that kind of borderline 
um, as such, um, for the most part. Um, but I can just kind of duplicate those up there, so you'll have that kind of smooth transitioning of the trees as well. So th there's loads of different things I can do to, to kind of combat that. Um, but it's all just going to depend. Um, at the end of the day, we're going to wait and see what looks good, what needs sorting, and we'll, we'll just kind of we'll, we'll go from there, in essence. Um, the sudden scales was pure brilliant. Oh no, did I go sudden scales? Oh dear. I feel like the invulnerability in invulnerable frames has such a has been such a time tester feature. Yeah, like invulnerability frames, like you need them. You need them for sure. And the invulnerability frames are not going anywhere. My point was more like I don't want while you're invulnerable for you to be useless. All I can do is run. And for that second, like it's not too bad the first few times. But if you're anything like me and you suck at your own game, I get damaged a lot. And it just feels it it feels like I'm not in control even though it's just for a second. But that second feels like an absolute lifetime when you're trying to do something and the game is not letting you do it. It is really annoying, especially when I could just kind of like I could even just shorten it. I could basically say for the first half for the first half of those invulnerability frames, you're not going to be able to attack. Which I think is fair and valid. Like, while you're actually in the taking damage animation, you, you cannot attack. That seems fair to me. But the moment you can start moving again, but you're still invulnerable, just so you can reposition after taking damage, so you're not going to be constantly taking damage. I think at that point, I need to make it such that you can attack again. Because let's be honest, in, in half a second, you're going to get like one attack in. Is that the most busted thing in the world? No, not really. And also, if you're putting yourself in a situation where you like have to attack straight away and you're spamming it, you're you you're most likely putting yourself in a in a dubious situation again anyway. So like, you're probably gonna take damage again, so you'll be punished for it. So I don't think it's a necessary feature for me to like still be including, if that makes sense. Um, but yeah, uh, I can't remember which button Hollow Knight used for the interact. Um, let me have a look. Hollow Knight Keybinds. I think they used F. Pretty sure. Uh, what are they? Uh, Hollow Knight controls. Hollow Knight. Um, jump is Z. X is attack. A is focus attack. Um, where is interact? Pause escape. It's not showing on this page at the very least. That's the map, super dash, inventory, pause dash, quick cast. I don't think it is. Does it potentially still just use X, actually? Does it, if you're close to, in fact, you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to, I'm going to launch Hollow Knight. That's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to load up Hollow Knight. <laughs> um, let me pull it up on Steam real quick. Uh, one second. Right, I'm back. I just wanted to make sure I wasn't going to be, like, loading up anyone's messages um, that people have sent to me. Uh, just while I load up because Steam comes up with all sorts of pop-ups as soon as you open it and I didn't want to risk any kind of messages being leaked or anything like that. Um, I respect everyone's privacy. Um, Hollow Knight. Hollow Knight. Where is Hollow Knight? There we go. Play. Let's just actually go straight into it. Let's just have a look. Now I'm thinking of it. I'm pretty sure if you're just close to something, the attack becomes the interact. So I think it's actually X. Uh, read the other messages, mate. Uh, oh, have, have we have we already covered this? <laughs> um, I really can't remember. I can't remember what Hollow Knight is. Uh, X, up, down, arrow. Um, who's used generally? Is it lagging again? Are you planning on demoing any conversations at any conventions? Blah blah blah. Um. 
Oh my god, so many messages. This is what happens when I go focus mode. I there's like so many messages that I can't keep up. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure like it's yeah. They they just change it to be like the um the actual X attack just becomes the interact. But I I I'm still just gonna test it anyway. Um, just for my own sanity. Uh oh no X E F Z. Oh, I mean, that was just the up arrow. X. Oh, it's just up. Yeah, it is the up button. That's crazy. That's not what I thought it would be at all. Yeah. Up arrow. That feels weird. That feels weird. Let's just alt F4 that. Um, I don't, I actually don't like that. I mean, I always just play on controller. Like, all my game time is on the Xbox anyway, which is why I've not got much. No, I haven't got much play time on the old, uh, on the old Steam there. Um, <laughs> I didn't want to say this, but I told you. Yeah, like, you will learn very, very quickly. The more, the more of these streams you watch, I'm not the brightest of sparks. Like, I, I can be a bit dumb sometimes. And by sometimes, I definitely mean all the time. Like, I'm, the, I'm, I'm always the first one to say, like, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Um, but yeah. Up oh, arrow. That feels like a weird design choice. That feels weird. I mean, I get it because in most times you're kind of like, you're looking up towards people. So I guess it makes sense. Um, but yeah. Uh, it's always about how something feels. Not how underlying systems actually work. Like how we said Exactly. Exactly. And, like, being a designer, like, my primary focus on, like, game design is, like, or on game development as a whole, is game design. Like, I focus on the feeling of things before, like, functionality, form, anything like that. It's the thing I most find most interesting, like, basically using the psychology of players. Like, what do players think? What do they do? Like, how do they engage with certain things, you know? um also skipping dialogue uh implemented yet no but it's like for the most i think i just want i think i just want to remake my entire narrative narrative system i'm not gonna lie i'm not 100 percent thrilled with it um so i'm probably just gonna end up remaking it completely and just go from there um because to be fair i i don't even know let me have a look where have i got an npc i think i have an npc in scene two Let's have a gander. Uh, or I deleted them. That could also be an option. Oh, no. NPCs. I'm lying. There we go. Uh, oh, yeah. I, okay. I straight up deleted the script. So I will be... I will be completely remaking it. Because <laughs> I deleted the script. Um, yeah. But I, I was not a fan. But I will be setting it up. So, uh, yeah. You, you'll be able to skip through dialogue if you want. Um dynam right there saying he isn't interested in law subtly <laughs> i don't care about this i don't care where you came from give me my ability and get out of here um but no it's something it was what it was actually one of the main pieces of feedback i got from the demo uh with regards to like mechanics and that kind of stuff especially because i had one npc um who spoke a lot <laughs> I crammed, like, so much dialogue into, like, this one NPC you couldn't skip through. As soon as you interacted with them, you were locked there for, like, two minutes. That was a big design flaw. Um, but again, just didn't have any chance to kind of go through it. Um, are you planning to demo at any conventions? PAX East is coming up. Right now, the game is not in a playable state. <laughs> I've been saying for, like, two months now that I'm going to be releasing a demo. And then for two months, I've just been, like not doing that um so yeah we we we, we will see um i'm d going to conventions and doing that kind of stuff is something i definitely do want to do uh but it's not going to be anytime soon i'm not going to be doing that until i have a full playable demo which i am currently aiming to have done by may um that's not to say that you won't be able to play this before may because I do plan to have some, like, kind of closed sessions, um, inviting certain people, potentially even people from the stream, uh, to, like, play test and do that kind of stuff. And there will be smaller versions of the demo made as I go. Um, but the main demo, which is going to be the actual demo for my game, 
which is going to be the, the main demo that I put on Steam. It'll stay there until I release, that kind of stuff. I'm aiming for May to have that done. So that's going to be essentially five months to have a fully polished version of this, um, plus all the other bits that are going to be going up here with the actual the rest of the bit. This, this is like a third of what the final demo will be. And there'll be another boss, at least another one boss at the very least, and a little arena I'm planning to have down here. Like, you know, in a Hollow Knight where you've got the the um, the Arena of Fools. It's going to be a little version of that. Um, but one that you just kind of, if you walk into, the gates close behind you. It's, it's basically a boss room, but um, you're going to be fighting a bunch of enemies. A bunch of smaller enemies um, rather than a boss itself. Um, so I've got a lot of work to do. So I'm giving myself five months to do it. Um, considering I'm doing this part-time as well. I only do this in the afternoon for a couple of hours after I've finished work. So time is limited. I also do the whole YouTube thing, which takes up time. So I think five months is a reasonable estimate um, to get that done. But yeah, after that, yes, I will be looking to go to conventions and just kind of share, get wish lists, engage with the community, all that kind of stuff. It would be great to get some playtesting sessions, gather some feedback yes it's 100 something i want to do i'm um, just not just yet um it can get a bit annoying uh yeah i 100 like we, I, I you need to be able to skip dialogue for sure for sure um i don't want to say anything but i told you so <laughs> yeah okay yeah we're we're more we're, we're more or less getting up to date with these comments now i'm making it i'm making it i got used to the oparo in dialogues um and I did like it in, in Awita. Everybody else complains that's uncomfortable. Yeah, I think it's just because it's it's not a familiar thing, you know? Like, I don't know. Like, it makes sense. But for me, I'm like, if I'm going to interact, I want to set key to interact. Or, like, if I'm engaging with an enemy, have like the have it be like attack. And if I'm engaging with an with an with a with a familiar or an npc have the attack button turn into the interact so if it's a foe you attack if it's friendly you you engage um but i, I just like the idea of like having a bit more control and it sounds like such a minuscule thing to have control over but knowing that i can interact with what i want to interact with when i want to interact with it just feels good i don't know i like that control um yeah, that's my experience with it as well. My dinner came very nice. What have you got, someone? What What have you got for dinner? Please share. I've got some. Uh, I've got some stew cooking again. Um, so I'm very, very excited about that. That's going on in the oven at the moment. It's a slow cook. It's been going on since about mm, three o'clock. So uh, once the stream's done in a couple of hours, that's when I'll be eating. So I'm gonna let properly slow cook. Proper slow cook that beef right down, so it'll be tender, fall apart in my mouth. That's exactly what I want. I got the same as yesterday. Oh, you got another wrap. Very nice. Very, very nice. Um, alrighty, let's get this camera set up so we don't get a crash whenever we load in. Because, you know, we don't like crashes. Proximity manager, do I need to do anything for this? I don't think so just yet. Um, I should be fine. Uh, camera bounds, though. So let's let's double check that we've got everything going right with the camera. So we've got the different layers. That's fine. This is linked up to this, which is ease in and out. That's fine. Uh, the camera will be in here. Locked to the main area, which is true. It's in the right space. Um, it's following this. We've got the different camera bounds. Triggers and room targets we don't need to worry about. See, to me, in my head, I'm thinking this should just work now. Um, I mean, if it doesn't, we'll just check the error logs and go from there. Let's see. Let's see what happens. Should have moved my character a bit closer so I could actually get there a little bit quicker. Oh, well. Oh, no. We got an issue. Okay. What is the issue? Camera manager. Uh, oh, we've just got an extra thing in the camera manager. That's easy enough to fix. Uh, load scene. Set up. Camera, camera manager. That can go. Uh, to be fair, these two can go for now because we're not using them right now. Um, both those cameras are basically just, so I've got three different types of cameras. 
um, which I can use. I've got the main camera, which is this one, which basically allows, it just freely follows and like automatically positions itself. So the camera is always slightly in front of you so you can always see what's ahead. Um, then I've got this one, which is exactly the same, except it won't move in the vertical direction. So if we've got a bunch of terrain, that's kind of like, so it's got subtle variants and you're jumping around the camera won't move vertically it'll stay horizontal and the, the player will be the only thing that moves um so it's good for like long corridors and things like that and then we've got a locked camera position which basically allows me to like zoom in or zoom out and just have a set camera so it'll be used for the likes of boss rooms and things like that so the camera won't move at all only the player will be moving so it'll be better for those like precision platforming elements and things like that and for, for boss rooms um just useful so you can just engage with the world a bit more comfortably essentially because especially with precision platforming elements you don't uh, you want as much as little screen movement as possible just so that like it just feels better like if you're if the camera system is working against you while you're trying to be like accurate with your movements that's an issue um and there we go we've got another room set up happy days look at that and it takes us back lovely lovely was there a bit of an the camera's like moving up slightly when I transition here. Is that like a thing I really care about all that much? Don't know. Do I care about that? I don't know why that why that's actually happening. Does the old demo have uh, abilities? It has the dash, um, and it's not a very good looking dash, um, but it is. It is there. Uh, it was just a set pickup. You went to a certain place in the map, you unlocked the dash, and then you could dash. Um, I didn't have the skill tree system or anything like that. Um, but it does work. It it did the job. In essence, it, it did the job. Um, I think the issue with the camera system, uh, if I go into the camera, is to do with all the easing. So I think I want to remove a bit of that easing. Um... So it's not in the camera bounds. It'll be under the camera manager. This? Yeah. I think I want to set that to zero. I think that is going to make it so the camera snaps a bit better. Uh, where Where is that place on the map? I will load up the demo and show you. Um, the The map for the for the old demo is a completely different layout though. It's I'm, I'm, I'm completely remaking this. Oh no, we've still got that easing. I need to figure out that. I'll do that off screen though. Um, cause me troubleshooting shit like this is just going to be like boring as all hell to watch. I on, you have a skill tree. I need to catch up. She's yeah. Sam, we have a full blown skill system, like big, big, big changes. Um, let me just reset the demo just so I can like showcase it properly to you. Um, that save. Okay. Reload it. Yeah, we have a full skill system. It's kind of the main mechanical hook of Amber's Tale now. So instead, when you when you defeat bosses or go to certain points of interest, um, you're no longer actually going to like just be given a certain ability. You're going to get to choose what that is via the skill tree. Oh, yeah, we have we have a skill tree. It looks cool. It's epic. We love it. Um, I'm, you're also going to be able to upgrade your abilities here as well. So it's just a big web. It's going to be awesome. Um, but let's say you want the dash. You, you can unlock the dash. And then from there, you can do different... You can add different upgrades to it. So you'll get different upgrade points and all that kind of stuff. Um, and yeah, you'll be able to like choose the order in which you unlock certain abilities. So that is why uh, level design is going to be a really... So you can see right now, I can't technically get up here because I don't have the wall jump. So you'd have to go explore somewhere else, then unlock the wall jump, and then bada bing, bada boom, suddenly you can access a new area. Whee! Um, my man's making everyone's will. Everyone's will. Ori x Hollow Knight. Honestly, like, I'm just trying to... I just want my Metroidvania to be as, like, customizable as possible. I want you to be able to decide the order in which you do things. Like, properly. Like, legitimate non-linear. Like, because a lot of, like, Metroidvanias, they're, like, non-linear. You can go anywhere you want in the order you want. But it's, it's like, it's kind of, like, masked linearity, in a way, you know? Like, Hollow Knight's a good example of this. Like, the, the game is pretty linear until you've got... 
Until you've got the desolate dive, the game is pretty linear, realistically. Like, yes, there are slight variations on, like, how you get to, like, the, the City of Tears and things like that. But you take your average player, I would say a solid 90% of them will end up going in the exact same direction. They will, they will get to the City of Tears the exact same way as any other player. Whereas in Amber's Tale, you're going to be, you're going to defeat the first boss after the first tutorial or whatever. You're going to get your upgrade point and you're literally going to have a decision of three different abilities to choose. Each of which takes you to a different place in the map with different objectives and all that stuff. So in theory, like I would, I would love, I'm going to add some kind of stat tracking system for this, right? Such that I can track how many people choose what ability first because it like if i've done my job correctly the split should be reasonably even right most people most people should just choose one of the three it should be 33 percent give or take for the first of it which means that a third of each, a, a third of everyone is going to have a different exploration experience on the demo. Like, rather than it being pretty linear, as soon as you get to the boss, like, there should be three different playstyles, essentially. Um, so yeah. Never mind, I found the dash. Didn't realize that you could jump into uh, a new room above you. Wait, are you playing the demo right now? Have you got access to the demo still? I, I didn't think there was a way for the demo. I didn't think the demo was still available. <laughs> I thought I'd taken it down everywhere. Uh, never mind, I found the dash. How you have it? You're playing the demo while watching the Steam? Real Giga Chan. <laughs> True. No, yeah, the demo. The, the old demo is terrible, though. The old demo is terrible. It's bad. Um. Yeah, everyone uses the same expect. The same exact path except crazy speedruns exactly and i don't want that like in my game i want it to be um quite different i became a patron oh you became a patron i need to be a lot more active on patreon <laughs> i say i'll be doing all this stuff i just haven't done it it's really bad it's, a, it's at least tripled my love for the game. <laughs> Bless. Thank you. I really appreciate that, man. I really appreciate that. Thank you. Oh, that's so nice. Um, yeah, you're basically getting nothing other than the demo right now on Patreon. I think I'm actually going to be... I think I'm actually just going to sack it, the Patreon. Um, and then just hope in like a few in a few months, if I keep up with the streaming and like the videos, I'm hoping I'll get monetized on YouTube. And I'll just transition it to that. Or I'll just set up a coffee account. Um, like coffee with a K. Because um, it's you, you actually just get more money straight up. Like coffee, there's like a monthly charge of like £4.50 for using their service. Whereas Patreon take like something like an 8% cut of everything. So statistically, like you're just as a creator getting more of the money people give to you. Um by using coffee and yeah i'm not monetized at all i have not got the watch hours for it um i'll show you my statistics real quick we're like we're getting close we're definitely getting close but yeah i am not monetized um da -da 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 -da. and so yeah we are here right now so we've got like near enough three thousand subscribers we've got this but we don't have the watch hours because we don't have enough people watching my videos <laughs> And we're definitely not there with the shorts, but shorts are not going to be the way I go. Um, but yeah, we're almost we're almost two thirds of the way there with the watch hours, um, which is kind of like an it's like half the reason I'm kind of doing the streaming as well. I say half; it's like twenty percent of the reason I'm doing streaming. Um, yeah, just so I can get some additional watch hours because these doing the streams count towards that. It's funny; like I'll upload a video, and here's a here's a shocking thing for you, right? um if i go into my content let's look at my most my most recent video right and we'll go to 
watch hours. Okay, so this is the, the stat chart for my most recent video. So we've got 113 hours of watch time, right? 2.6k views. Didn't perform all that great, but it is what it is. Um, yeah, so we, we've got 113 watch hours. This video took me about like 20 to 25 hours to make, including the recording, scripting, editing, collating all the actual like footage for it. About 20, let's say about 25 hours, right? To get 113 watch hours. If I then come to my live streams, um, and let's even just take the last one. Um, this three hour stream here. 17.2 watch hours for me sitting down engaging with people just having a chat the like the the cost the the like cost slash reward of live streaming is just like so much higher when it comes to actually getting the watch hours you know like and to be fair this is probably one of the the worst performing ones my first live stream got me like 40 odd out hours watch hours because like it got a thousand views this, this live stream got almost as many views as, like, half the amount of views as my last devlog. So it's like, I'm just going to live stream. Like, I'm still going to make the devlogs. Don't get me wrong. I'm still going to aim for the monthly devlog. But if I could supplement that with live streams and, like, bolst that up a little bit, I'm not relying on basically one of my devlogs going viral. I can just kind of, like, live stream and boost it up a little bit um how many watch hours do your streams get on average well yeah ar around like anywhere from like 20 to like for a three hour live stream um so far on average it's anywhere from like yeah 20 to 20 to 50 watch hours which is pretty pretty good for three hours like if i streamed for as long as it took me to like make a video so like four four or five streams right no it wouldn't even be that it'd be like if i let's say i stream did like four six hour streams i'd probably get like 200 250 watch hours and i could do that over the course of two weeks you know so let's say i did six hours worth of streaming a week let's, let's whip out the calculator let's whip out the calculator if i did two six hour streams a week let's say which isn't out of the realms of possibility um time's up by 52 times that by let's say on average let's like if i don't grow at all i don't gain any additional subscribers i don't get like any like extra following or any additional viewers which is like let's be honest it, it's it's that's not the way it works if as you upload content i'll be making shorts and stuff from these live streams which is additional reach like i'm basically doing a live stream then snipping taking snippets from the live stream and uploading them as shorts so even though live streams themselves don't get much like visibility and traction i'm taking snippets of that uploading them as shorts which do get a lot of visibility and traction i'm basically getting the same reach and the same viewership as i would making a video with the added bonus of having that extra engagement through doing the live streams um and let's say on average, I get 30 hours of watch time. Over the course of a year, that's 18,000, near enough 19,000 watch hours. And I'm spending less time actually working on the content creation aspect of it. But I'm getting a lot more. So like for me right now, if my goal, if my primary goal is to get monetized live streaming is the way to go it's just a it's just more cost efficient on my time 100 percent, big time and i only need four thousand watch hours in order to get monetized so like a quarter of that i could in theory if i stream twice a, twice twice a month twice a week for six hours i could be monetized in two months that doesn't sound bad that doesn't sound bad at all. And that's not much of an investment on my part. And I enjoy this. So, like, I, I'm hella down for that. I would rather stream twice a week, three times a week, do longer streams, than make the devlogs. Because it's more personable. I can gain just as much reach, technically, by using shorts 
the shorts will bring subscribers and new viewers which then may watch the live streams which will increase the viewership of the live streams which just for context is already working my first live stream i was averaging around like eight viewers right now for this for most of this stream i've been averaging 14 viewers and i'm only like three streams in like i've almost doubled my average viewership just from doing this which is kind of crazy when you think about that but yeah um where'd you get the demo they they got the demo on on patreon it's still technically on there um but yeah I, as I was saying, my initial point is ultimately I'm probably going to phase out um, Patreon. And I'm just going to, as soon as I get monetized, I'll just stick to like the YouTube monetization and memberships and that kind of stuff. Um, just because it's easier to, I, I think it's easier to get membership than it would be to get someone on Patreon. Especially when I personally am not offering much extra value um, to someone as a Patreon. Like I can, ac I can give access to the demo. But I could also just do that through a membership, you know, kind of thing. Um, and it's just easier to click on a membership, which is just below a video or below a live stream, than it would be to, like, click on a link, then click on another page within Patreon, add your account details, make a new account if you don't already have one. This is too much of a barrier to entry. Um, YouTube memberships are very inconsistent. Um, yeah, I mean, it's the same It's the same with Patreon. Like, it would be the same kind of deal. Um, it wouldn't be something I'm relying on because at the end of the day, I've got a, I've got a job in, at the moment. Um, I wouldn't be like, let's put it this way: I would need to be making a a fair chunk of money before I would like quit my job and go full time on this stuff. Um, like, it's it's basically any money whatsoever that I'd be making from memberships is being funneled straight into like artists, sound designers. Um, the Millen Brothers, Hannah, Penny USB Mike, the, all the money I'm going to be getting until I'm at a point where I can, like, make a livable wage from this is just going to the artists and, and, and the other creators just so that they, they can get paid. Because um, at the end of the day, I've got a job. As much as I would rather do this full time, it's more important that I pay the, the creators who are, like, working alongside me and doing, like, the heavy lifting with stuff. Um, I'm like, sorry, I missed your comment. Um, what are the three skill unlocks? Depending on what they are, it may not even be 32% each way. I actually completely agree with you. I, I realistically, I don't think it will be 33%. Um, because the three skill unlocks that I've got right now are essentially a dash, a wall jump, and Reaper's Gift. Um, and if I just unlock Reaper's Gift, I'll be able to show you. So the dash is quite simply... Uh, dash um wall jump you'll never guess what that does it allows you to jump on walls the reaper's gift is cool the reaper's gift is this big slime it's essentially desolate die from hollow knight but you turn into a reaper and you slam into the ground that's a cool ass ability i think most people will probably end up going for that <laughs> you know i think most people will go for that so I think it'll most likely be skewed. Like, I reckon 60% of people would probably go for Reaper's Gift. 30% of people would go for Dash. And then your, your additional 10% of people would go for Wall Jump. But saying that, I've also got sent plans here. So there's going to be foreshadowing. So if you go left right at the beginning, instead of going the, the directed path, um, you're going to be able to see places that you'll be able to go. This blue essentially indicates that you need the wall jump in order to um, access it. There's going to be foreshadowing right at the beginning of the game towards the, the wall jump. Um, and things like that. So it, it, there's so many factors that could like come into consideration when deciding that kind of stuff. It's like it, it's tricky to gauge. I, I wouldn't really be able to say um, what the stats will be. That's why it's so interesting. I really want to see that. I really see, want to see what's going on with that. Um, we're going to 24-7 watch the, the stream for the watch hours. Honestly, like, that's the thing. Like, even if you're not going to, like, watch the actual live stream or anything, legitimately, even just having it open, muted, and tabbed at the side helps me out so much. Like, that is three additional watch hours. Let's say I do, like, my average streams are about three hours, right? At the moment, just because that's what I can do. 
like just having the stream open for my current situation when i'm trying to get the watch hours is like incredibly valuable even if you're not going to watch the stream which is completely valid because you know <laughs> i'm not the most entertaining person ever um just literally having that open supports me so much it's crazy um doo -doo 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 -doo. <laughs> Dino's gonna stream every day now. Honestly, I'd be game for that. Like, I, I just, I, I'd do some game dev and just stick Dynam on my second monitor and just like chill and and, and watch Dynam make an infinite loop of different cabinets. That, that's, 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 that's honestly pretty chill. I, I'd be game. Um, I really hope it works and you get there as soon as possible. Thank you. I really appreciate that. I'm also, I'm, just, I'm doing this as a supplement though. I'm still gonna be working on the dab logs and stuff like that. Um. I'm basically just trying different things and seeing what works. Um, and so far, this seems to be working. And I'm really enjoying the workflow. Um, and as soon as I'm actually able to get some work done... Um, but I think it's one of those things. It's, I'm still new to this. So engaging with people and stuff like that, it's pretty new. I'll probably get better at it, quicker at it. I'll be able to like not waffle as much. I'll be able to multitask a bit easier the more I do it. So I'll actually be able to do some work while engaging with people. A, a variety of different things. So um, yeah, we'll, we'll go from there. Uh, plus the membership isn't five, $5 across the world. Yeah, exactly. Like everything's just so inconsistent. That's why I'm not relying on it. It's more just a case of I'd really like to get monetized just so I can get just some money and also like basically just close down the Patreon and just like have the memberships be there. Plus, as soon as I get monetized for the first, because there are multiple stages to the monetization, the ad sensor is going to be like nothing. So it, it doesn't really matter. But the moment I get to the first tier of monetization, I can start selling merch, which is probably going to be what I do. That's going to be the main way that I, I try to make some money. So selling um, Amber's Tail merch. I actually have like an Amber's Tail hoodie. Uh, give me one sec. I'll go grab it so you can see. Because it's pretty epic. There we go. Look at that. Amber's Tail hoodie. It's honestly like the most comfortable thing I own. It's, it's, it's incredible. Like I wear it all the time and it was actually designed by my partner. So kudos to her. Yeah, there she is. The woman, the, the legend. Yeah, she, she, she did the little designs for that. It's pretty epic. Oh, my mouse has stopped working. Ah. Oh, this is what happens when you spill an entire pint of Pepsi over your mouse. It just stops working. It's not cool. Ah. Apparently this fixes it. Does it? Nope. Ah, oh, there we go. That fixed it. Yeah. But yeah, I've got some I've got some merch. Um I'd still need to figure it all out, but the moment that I get monetized, I can actually sell that directly underneath all my videos. Epic. Epic. Um, Seven Araka. Hello. Hi. Hello. Sorry. I'm like really delayed with reading all my chat. I'm very bad at this. I'm still new to streaming. I promise I'll get better. Hello. I haven't forgotten you. It just took me a while to get to your comment. But hello and welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, Hey, mate. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you? Uh, can I build my own pixel game on a laptop GTX 1650 and an iPhone i5 processor? Probably. Um, I mean, most likely, right? You don't actually. Oh, my mouse is like not working again. It's like. I'm, I, I am not currently holding down like. Ah, oh, good. Not good. Um, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna focus on the comment. Hope that the mouse just fixes itself. Um, I I'm not the best when it comes to specs and that kind of stuff. It depends on the software you would need. So most people I would say probably use Asprite or Asprite, um, which is this software that I'm using right here um, to actually to make pixel art. And I highly recommend it. I really like this. It's just got it's got a lot of features for animating and that kind of stuff. Really nice piece of software. 
this is not a very intense piece of software like i can run this on my old laptop which was basically just like a bog standard work laptop pretty easily to do um or you could even make pixel on your phone like there are apps that are like decent enough um you could do it on your phone um and then it depends on your game engine or if you want to make your own game engine um like you you don't need that be here of a computer um like if, you, if you're wanting to like get started on pixel art and you've maybe got not not got the best laptop i'd maybe recommend godot um as the game engine you choose to use uh it's free it's open source um it's a very lightweight game engine it is extremely performant it's like, like the actual game engine itself is something like 37 megabytes in size it's ridiculous it runs very very well um so i reckon you could pr uh, if I, I would be shocked if you couldn't run that on a laptop um with a gtx 650 i would say it can run on much worse specs than that much much worse than that um so i think you'd be fine but it, it depends on the software you try to use um i wouldn't recommend using unreal for on those kind of specs uh unity might work okay it might um i wouldn't really be able to comment on it it, it might be fine um but yeah oh brb dime see you very shortly see you shortly um but yeah it just depends i would i would say give it a go like godot is free right download it mess around with it see if it runs fine on your computer if you can run godot you can make a pixel art game on your laptop quite simply follow along some follow some tutorials and go from there um it'll just be a case of doing a bit of experimentation basically um but i think you'd be fine i think you'd be more than fine like i'm not gonna lie my computer's not the best my computer's not the best either so my mouse just straight up isn't working now oh oh my god like literally my mouse is just highlighting everything click click like straight up my mouse is just broken there is a godot mobile no 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 um godot is not mobile but i when i when i mentioned the mobile ooh, i just flipped my bin under my table i made a mess oops um there there are apps that you can use on mobile to literally make your pixel app which is what i was talking about um and that works pretty well like don't get me wrong there are better options but if you're a stage where like if your bottleneck is the fact like you've got the game engine and you can do that kind of stuff um but maybe the the art like if you're using photoshop that could be a bit intense to run on a pc that maybe isn't the best um there there are lots of options is what i'm saying like it just depends what's best for you and your workflow like if you prefer to hand draw stuff and you don't want to use like a tablet and that kind of stuff you can you can just use your phone and and, and hand draw on your phone um but i mean my workflow i use unity i use a sprite they're great a sprite you can get for free um as well i've got the paid version which, in, which like through steam um but the, you are able to go onto their github and pretty sure and get a sprite for free it's a bit more of a tedious like workaround but you can do that um so you can do it for free and using software that's like pretty good um wait godot is available on android what when did this happen there is mind blown uh, so uh, yeah you don't even need a pc to make a pixel art game anymore you can do it on your mobile that is crazy i didn't even realize that was a thing mind blown is that like new or is that like a thing that's been going for a while 12th december 2023 was that release uh let's go to the archive 
Has it always been on Android? That's crazy. Godot is like... Giga Chad, honestly. Like, I've, I've got Godot installed. Like, I'm just... Like, for, for what I want to do in Amber's Tile, I didn't mess around with it. I wasn't going to be able to make Amber's Tile in, in Godot. Um... Because there were just some features that I've made in Unity that, like, I wouldn't be able to, I wouldn't be able to use. Such as, for example, my, my mouse has just started working for some reason, by the way. No idea why. Um, but one of the main ones was the lighting system. I need the sprites, this sprite kind of um, light, so I can do my fading and that kind of stuff. I could have maybe figured out a way to make this using shaders. But the amount of time that it would take me to invest in learning shaders for something that wouldn't work as well as this, it, as well as like some of the other features, it just wasn't the trade-off for me. Um, but yeah, um, it's been some time. Damn, I didn't even realize. That's crazy. Every stream, there's something happening. Literally. Like, yesterday, there was the storm. Today, we've got... In defense, today was self-inflicted. I did knock an entire pint of juice onto onto my mouse. That was my bad. But yesterday wasn't even my fault. There was a bloody storm outside and it made my internet act terribly. So that was not fun. That was not fun. That's mad. Yeah, so I guess, I guess to, to summarize, yeah, you can definitely make a pixel art game. You could even make the pixel art game on your mobile exclusively that is a challenge right there right there um but yeah you can get i i recommend looking into getting a sprite amazing chef's kiss um and you can get it for free i mean i've spilt water on almost every stream i've done it's weird when it doesn't happen honestly do you know what it was as well i've got my second monitor and it's on like a it's on an arm um, so I can like pivot it and so if like my because my part our bed is here our apartment is tiny our, our apartment is tiny you have to skirt you have to like scooch to get to the other side of the room because we've got our like tv and bed right next to each other and the room is so small that like there is there is literally this much of a gap to get to the other side of the room unless you climb over the bed um but my partner was on the, sitting on the bed and I wanted to show her something on my screen. I moved the screen, forgetting that my, my glass of juice was like in front of the screen and just went and knocked it all over. Not a fun time to be alive. Um, <laughs> when's the next stream? Yeah, Dino, when are you next to your stream? When's the next Dynam stream? I'm excited. You've listened to me for long enough now. I need, I need to get back to listening to you. I need to watch you and you entertain me. How about that? <laughs> Or I'll just do it as Mongold. You live stream and I'll live stream, but I'll stream watching your stream. I'll do a reaction to your stream. <laughs> hello, hello. Uh, S. Beef. Hello, how are you doing? Um, yeah, I'll just start doing some like React content. Now, React content is terrible. Like, it's so unethical. Never mind. How about you guys do a stream collab? Bro, like, I would be down, but at the same time, the crippling social anxiety of being in a call with Dynam, with being in a call with anyone, honestly, would just, like, <laughs> I think it would be, I would just be so awkward. <laughs> like, I'm talking, I'm essentially talking to myself right now. I'm just talking to a camera. This is weird, like, in a way. Like, I'm talking to you, but, like, I'm, it's, it's, like, it's a very one-sided verbal conversation, right? It's weird. As soon as another person is there and you get those like live reactions and it's just like, man, I'm just too autistic for that. I don't know. That would be, it would be so, I would, I, it like, it wouldn't be awkward. I would be awkward. But at the same time, I, I would be game. Could be interesting. Maybe we could just, we could do a game jam or something together. Ease into it. <laughs> like game jam off screen. Like just like jump in a call. We'll do something like that. We'll do a little collaboration or something. Um, but I don't think the first time we do any kind of collaboration should be on stream because that's just going to be awkward as all hell. And people don't need to see that whatsoever. <laughs> that would be so bad. It would be like, so, uh, yeah, the, the, the weather's nice. Game dev. Well, I like game dev. Hello. Oh, just stream good 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 stuff 
be do disconnects. Like, I'm just awkward as all hell. Crippling social anxiety. It's incredible. Which is really weird. Because, like, like I, I don't really have, like, social anxiety. But at the same time, I do. Like, I'm a really weird hybrid of being, like, very, very extroverted. But at the same time, being extremely introverted. It's, like, I'm a bit of an anomaly. I don't know. Because I used to be very extroverted. Um, but then since COVID, with all the lockdown stuff, I didn't really engage with many people all that much. And that's kind of when I met my partner. And my partner is a very introverted person. Um, so it kind of, like, naturally rubbed off on me a little bit. Um, but as soon as I actually get started, I'm pretty, like... That's the, I'm a, I, th I feel I'm a pretty outgoing person. Like, I say, like, oh, haha, ha, yeah, I'll be, like, really awkward. I wouldn't be. It, I would feel awkward, but I don't think I'd present myself as awkward, if that makes sense. But inside, I'd be like, ah. But on the outside, you'd be like, oh, this guy's pretty confident. Like, they know what they're talking. I think I present myself as a confident individual. But inside, I'm like, I want to go home and just sleep. And be on my own. And have cuddles. Like... Yeah, and I think half of that is just because, like, obviously being autistic, I've masked my entire life. So it's like, I'm just kind of used to pretending to be how people want me to act. You know, holy shit, we're the same person. <laughs> Literally. Did you, like, did you, like, um, did you censor that yourself? Or did YouTube censor that, by the way? <laughs> I'm actually really curious. Um... Um, I only will have social anxiety before an interaction, but once I'm in it, I'm absolutely fine. Extroverted. -y. Yeah, I'm exactly the same. I'm exactly the same. Like, I'd be like, oh my god, I'm gonna be talking to Dino. It's gonna be weird. Uh, I'm gonna make a fool of myself. I'm gonna be overthinking everything. I'll be like, what if he hates me? What if he, like, never wants to speak to me again? And then, like, we'll, we'll start talking. It'll, it'll just be chill. Like, it won't be that bad whatsoever. Well, I, I even go as so far as to say, you know what? We might even have a good time. <laughs> but inside, I'm like, this is this is stressful. This is stressful. Um, Now I wonder how many people are like that. Because it's kind of what happens with me as well. Yeah, exactly. Like, I feel a lot of people are secretly like that. Um, even extroverts. Because like I, I would actually consider myself a very extroverted person. Like, I can talk to anyone. Um, it just, I don't know. It's just that feeling inside. I don't always know what to say. And I'm just uncomfortable with silence. So I just start verbal diarrhea. I just talk about anything. Um, so yeah, it's weird. Wait, you're autistic? Yes, I have Asperger's. I was like, I was actually diagnosed very late. I was only diagnosed like, I say like very late. I was diagnosed like eight years ago. Which is actually very late on. Like, I was 19 when I got diagnosed. So, it's very, very late. But it's actually because my younger brother is, like, he's very, he's very autistic. He's got anger management issues, all that kind of stuff. Um, so, uh, while living at home, a lot of the stuff and lo a lot of the techniques that were put in place to, like, help him and support him with his autism naturally just fell in line for me. Because I was, like, like, kind of, like high iq and that kind of stuff it was not really pushed upon me because i was i i did a lot of performing arts as well like i used to um i used to play the oboe and core and clay like kind of semi-professionally for 14 years i played in the liverpool philharmonic like i had a lot of things put in place where i was like i was a high performing student i had a large circle of friends like it it was just one of those situations where it was like this guy is not autistic he doesn't he doesn't show any of this but like i was just masking the whole time the whole time i was just like panicking didn't know what happened didn't know what was going on i was just doing as i was told it was really really weird um so yeah it wasn't until i started doing my a levels that i got diagnosed um and there was actually a therapist that diagnosed me they were like ooh something's a bit fishy here um and yeah I went, did some of the tests, and they were like, yes, this this man is autistic. Get this man some help. <laughs> um, but yeah, crazy, crazy story, crazy stuff.
Um, I censored it. I am like that. Ah, uh, that's fair. To be fair, I need to start censoring my own stuff anyway. Like, I think in this stream, I've already sworn so much. So much. It's crazy. Like, I just need to catch myself before it actually happens. Um, so that's where the accent comes from, eh, Dynam? Um, am I missing some context? I feel like I'm missing some context. Moving on. I'm like that. Yes. I feel like lots of, even like introverted people, like, the thing is, I think a lot of people like maybe mix up the fact that like being introverted doesn't mean like you're a quiet person. It just means like you gain energy from being on your own or in a place of comfort. Whereas extroverted people gain energy and like top up their batteries through being with people and engaging with people like that. Like I, I gain my energy from being alone. I'm being with my partner. If it's just me and my partner, I be I become really energetic. I I feel great. I feel at peace. But I I need that social engagement. Like I need that social engagement to feel right as well. Like, but being in social engagements uses up my internal battery. Like it exhausts me being around people. That sounds really bad. Like, it doesn't exhaust me being around people, but, like, it requires energy. It, it requires, like, mental stimulation for me to, like, be around people, even just in a call. Um, so, like, I will do that. I'll, I just, like, take regular breaks. I'll just mute every now and again. I'll watch a YouTube video for, like, five minutes and then come back. Unironically, kind of Pomodoro method, but, like, with socializing. Um, little and often like I, I i am able to maintain long conversations deep conversations even all sorts um but yeah it just uh it takes a while um doo -doo 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 -doo. i can talk to anyone just not everyone yeah exactly every time it becomes awkward or silent i just address the fact that it's awkward and it usually works amazing that is like the most like direct thing possible i respect that so much i can literally just imagine i'm literally vividly picturing in your voice and everything just like being in a column just like well this is awkward <laughs> like i could i can just hear it so so perfectly that's hilarious uh this stream is an intro extrovert meetup literally i feel like so many people are like that though like a lot of people like really want to be around people but like you just need to take a break every now and again, you know? You just need to take a little bit of a break. Um, it took three different psychologists to get for, for me to get diagnosed. If you're too good at masking, you just don't get diagnosed, apparently. Legitimately, what happened with me? Legitimately, what happened with me? Like, I for, for context as well, right? I was in... I've been in therapy for, like, a long time. Like, I was adopted for when I was four... Like, there was a lot of trauma. I have an autistic brother with anger management who now lives in supported living because he was taken away from us because he was a danger. Like, he's knocked me out multiple times. I love him. I hate him. He's my brother. It's a weird relationship. There's a lot of... There's a lot of... I'm even going to swear. There's a lot of shit that goes on in my, in my head. And then on top of that, I was, like, autistic but not diagnosed. So I didn't even realize that the things I was thinking were, like irrational and all that kind of stuff and it was like there was a lot of trauma um so i've been i was in therapy i've been in like therapy for like years like years um and i was in therapy for like 10 years before i even like maybe even longer more than 10 years i was in therapy um before i even got diagnosed um it was crazy i just masked so hard um, and because I had so many different things going on as well, it just it just detracted from it. Crazy, crazy stuff. Um, oh, I don't go to psychologists. If I did, oh boy. Yeah, I mean, I'm just an advocate for therapy generally. I think I, I I'm one of those people who's like everyone can benefit from therapy in some regard, right? And like going to therapy isn't a admission of like something is wrong. It's like it's literally like saying it like the equivalent is like saying, right. I feel sick. So you go to a doctor, you know? You go to someone who knows what they're talking about. But when it comes to, like, being... Not even sickness of the mind, but, like, instead of being physically sick, 
like looking after your mental well-being you go to therapy or you go to a psychiatrist or something like that it's the exact same thing but for some reason when it's like your mind rather than body there's a massive stigma around it um but yeah like i'm a massive advocate for for therapy massive advocate for it it's helped me so much it's helped so many different people um but there is that stigma around it for some reason and i don't get it um it doesn't even have to be for the big things like even just going to therapy and being like i'm struggling with this am i being a rash am i thinking rationally and just being able to like have someone who kind of knows what they're going and just be able to unwrap certain aspects of things that you just little things even i think it can be massively beneficial to a lot of people um but yeah how's it going oh hello gad i i I struggle with your name so much. I just struggle with like usernames generally. Got it. Got it. Got it to second. Get it to seki siki. I'm just going to call you Gat. Or what do you want me to call you? Because I like, how do you want me to engage with you? Um, What do you want me to call you? Because like, I, I don't know how to pronounce that username. Um, But it's going well. Apparently we're all talking about like autism therapy and all sorts. It's a, it's a good time to be alive. Um, a bit of a deep conversation to jump into though um therapy is great but therapists can sometimes not be a good fit yeah very true um like i've had dozens of therapists there have been some that have been really really good and some that have been honestly more of a hindrance than help um but yeah if like one if you are able to find that person that you can kind of connect with and you feel heard you feel understood you feel listened to it's a really, really, really good feeling being able to just openly talk and discuss things. It's epic. Um, but you do have to be open to communicate. And also just admit to yourself that it's not a bad thing that you're in therapy. Like, going to therapy is, like, almost always a good thing, you know? It's just getting that kind of impartial advice. Epic. Good stuff. I'm all about it. Party, party emotes in there. Gat, Gatita, Gatita, uh, Gatti, you, <laughs> anything is fine. I'll call you Gatti, Gatti, Gatti. No, I'm not going to call you Gatti. That sounds like a really, that, that doesn't sound, sounds like I'm, like, I'm a scouser, right? So, like, in, in Scouseland, there's a lot of slang and all that kind of stuff, slang it. Like, if I say your name in the Scouse accent, in my bread, I'm just like, that sounds like a slur. That just sounds like something I'm saying really nastily. Like, all right, Gatti. Like, that just, I don't know. Yeah, don't clip the Scouse, please, I beg. Um, I'll call you Gat. Hello, Gat. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm glad we were able to help you out yesterday as well. I'm so sorry. We were literally talking about, like, your game and that kind of stuff. And that's when all the storm kicked in. The stream went down. It was just like really unfortunate timing. So I do apologize for that. Um, but yeah, I hope we were able to help out. I hope we were able to help out. Um, <laughs> yeah, moving on from the therapy talk, I guess. I'm interested. What kind of games do you play in your free time? Um, so that answer has changed an awful lot the older I've got. So... For the longest time, when I was growing up and when I was first introduced to gaming, because to be fair, I actually I actually got into gaming pretty late, all things considered. Like, I I only really... <laughs> Amber's Tale, of course, what do you mean? Yeah, I play Amber's Tale. Yeah, I mean, I like Metroidvanias, naturally. Um, though, ironically enough, I haven't actually played that many Metroidvanias. Like... This is going to sound really bad. Like, coming from someone who's making a Metroidvania, the only Metroidvania I've, like, actually completed is Hollow Knight. <laughs> I've admitted it here. It's terrible, I know. I've played parts of lots of different Metroidvania, but the only the only one I've actually sat down and, like, played beginning to end is is Hollow Knight. <laughs> Oops. Um, but that's... Oh, Tell Light, no. No, I was going to say Tell Light. I've played most of Haiku the Robot. I just didn't actually, like, finish the final boss. Um, I don't know why. I just stopped playing it. I think I think I just started playing something else at the time. But I'm going to go back and play it. 
um hollow Knight is so good it really is though it's such a powerful like emotional story and everything um but like when i was a bit young when i first started playing games i was just a massive blizzard fanboy like i played world of warcraft hearthstone hearthstone was a game that i played pretty much exclusively for like a year and a half it was like the only game i really played um got to legend i enjoyed the strategy side of things i like strategy games it's fun stuff uh, but then I remember when I was playing Hearthstone, there was a promotion when Heroes of the Storm came out to get a, a free card back for like Hearthstone. I was just like, sick, I want a free card back. That looks cool enough. Um, so I went and started playing Heroes of the Storm. And that started like three to four years of Heroes of the Storm being the only game I played. <laughs> like I was good at Heroes of the Storm. I miss that game so much. I miss that game. I've recently started playing it again. Oh my god, I love that game. Hands down, my favorite game of all time. Here is the storm. Um, I just have so much passion for it. Um, but because here is the storm died and they like cut all further updates. Um, I started playing League of Legends instead. It was really bad. I don't enjoy League, but it's one of those like it. It gives me that fix of competitiveness. Like, I'll play a single game of League of Legends, I'll lose, and then I'll just be really motivated to do anything but play League of Legends, and usually that means work on my game. So, like, if I'm ever feeling like I don't really want to do any work or I feel like procrastinating, I'll play a game of League of Legends, and then I'll just want to work. So, it's, 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 it's ironically enough a good solution. But the older I've got, and the less kind of free time I've had... um. I've kind of started to drift away from competitive games just because I don't have the time to invest into it anymore. Like I work, I work, which is like any, like at the moment I work like 30 hours a week um, doing my actual paid job. And then I come home, I'll probably work on Amber's Tale, maybe like 16 to 20 hours a week. Then I, I, I always make sure I prioritize spending some one-on-one -on -one time with my girlfriend at least every night, um, at least an hour every night. Usually ends up being a bit more because, you know, I enjoy spending time with my partner. I guess that's a good thing. Like, it's usually a sign of a, a good relationship. I enjoy spending time with her. So I do. And I always prioritize that. That's a non-negotiable. Um, So I don't honestly have, like, a massive amount of time to just play games. Especially games like MMORPGs or competitive games that you have to sink time into. So the older I've got, the more I've started to lean into, like, more casual console games and story-based games. Um, like Hollow Knight, Haiku the Robot, um, Ori and the Will of the Wisps. Um, one I've li I literally bought yesterday, uh, Call to the Lamb. Um, I played the demo for that um because there's like a free hour demo played that absolutely loved it like the gameplay loop on that is just so fun <laughs> and i know it's a roguelike um uh, but like the, the, the it's got that right balance of like humor lots of different gameplay elements like you've got the roguelike you've got the resource management city builder aspect of it you've got a funny narrative um you're playing as a lamb cultist like it's just funny and it, it's a game that i can just pick up for half an hour and play and i like that I like games that I can just pick up and put down. I don't have to commit to any set amount of time. Um, so yeah, it's more like story story based games these days. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Call of the Lamb is what I'm playing. Um, recently got um, Hogwarts Legacy as well on my Xbox um, as a bit of an early but as a bit of an early Christmas present from the missus. Um, so that's installed. I'll be working my way through that because I'm a massive Harry Potter fan. Massive Harry Potter fan. Like, I've listened to the audiobooks dozens of times. I've watched the movies more times than I care to admit. Um, it's Christmas as well. It might be just about time to start binging the Harry Potter series again. Potentially. Um, but yeah, massive Harry Potter fan. So Hogwarts Legacy is just a good time. A good time for me. Um... Yeah, just remember I haven't finished Hogwarts Legacy. Exactly. Now's a good time to fl finish playing that. Because <laughs> the thing is, I got it on my PC, and the performance wasn't the best. It's not the best. So I just kind of, like, spent 60 quid on a game that my PC can't really run. Um, but it was literally discounted. Um, it was 50% off. Like, I think it's still currently 50% off on the Xbox. So I was just like, okay. I, I really want to play this game. 
Um, so if I can't do it on my PC, I'll get it on the Xbox. And I know it'll work at least decently well on the Xbox. Um, so yeah, I've got it on there. I'll start working my way through that. Um, but yeah, Harry Potter is made. Exactly. Dynam, like, are we just the same person? This is like unironically kind of... <laughs> it's, it's getting a bit weird now. <laughs> We're like the same person. Like, what's going on? Uh, <laughs> in fact... How old are you as well? Um, don't don't worry if you don't want to share that information as well. I'm, I just I, like out of curiosity, I'm wondering like how old you are as well. Because if we're like ironically enough the same age as well, this is just funny. <laughs> Expelliarmus, lol, literally. Expecto Patronum, my man. Expecto Patronum, like literally. Uh, okay, this is a bit of a spoiler for the Amber's Tale. I haven't really like talked about this yet. Um, but the send forth ability. Um, in in this is um i'll show it up here this send forth ability it's literally like the the straight line projectile um straight line projectile uh ability from hollow knight um but i've gained a bit of inspiration from ironically enough harry potter um which is literally it's going to be like a kind of patronus of sorts like it's going to be an actual deer made of celestial light that you will like emanate and shoot out of yourself like and that the animal might change like depending on how much time i have and like how much budget and that kind of stuff some of the upgrades might be that the animal that you actually send forth will be slightly different and will have different effects according to what it is so at baseline it's going to be like a a stag that you shoot out and it will like deal damage and such but maybe later on down the line i you, you upgrade it so it turns into a bear and it's a bear and a bear is big and bulky so it'll knock enemies back further and have that additional effect and that kind of stuff so yeah kind of inspired by harry potter unironically but that's what the send forth ability is going to be so you heard it here first um i actually don't say my age online and that's completely fine. I, I, I completely get that. Um, it's the last bit of information I'm really holding on to. To be fair, I like to you say that. Like I not gonna I've I've not gone digging or anything. Um, but I don't I don't feel like I actually know all that much about you as a person. Like you as Dynam, I know, and like your experience doing game dev and stuff, but like come to think of it, just from watching your dev blocks, I don't actually think I know much about you as a person. I think I've learned more about you as a person from these streams, which is, I guess, the whole point of streaming, you know? Um, but yeah, that's fair. Like, I completely respect that. Um, I've shared so much about me. I hope nothing bad happens. <laughs> Literally. Um, I I feel like I'm just a bit too open of a book, to be honest. Like, I, I there's definitely stuff I shouldn't really be sharing, but at the same time, I'm like... I'm where I'm living now is like a temporary thing. It's a it's a student accommodation, so there's like so many different people and all that kind of stuff. Like if anything bad were to happen, it's like it's not really that big of a deal. Also, my audience is just not that big, <coughs> so I don't really worry about it all too much. Um. Also, PayPal donations reveal my full first and last name. Yeah, like I feel like that's. That, that kind of stuff is always just going to be there. And the thing is, like, when I ultimately release my game, my name is going to be on the game. So I'm like, yeah, like, it's it's one of those where it's like, people, like, that kind of information, like, people are ultimately going to find out anyway. So it's like, eh, you know. So I may as well just tell people. Plus, like, yeah, I don't know. I go, let me get credit card. <laughs> yeah, that kind of stuff I'm keeping hold on to. I'm not sharing any of those kind of details. Um, and I guess people know your birthday from the birthday stream. Oh, that was like recently, wasn't it? Wasn't your birthday stream like somewhat recent? Let me have a look. I don't know. Do -ba -do -ba -do. Uh, live. Uh, playing a game. Playing a horror game. Playing a subathon. Posting a game jam. I need your help. Playing other games, viewers. Oh, I don't think it's on here anymore. I think you might have delisted it. Never mind. We tried. Um, no, it's the first of April. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like, my, my my like concept of time is just like gone. Um, I have no idea. First of April. Ooh, that's a good like. We're even born around the same time. Like my birthday is the seventh of May. So we're like we're not even that far apart like 
<laughs> month-wise as well. We're born at the same part of the year. Got, like, similar interests. We're both making games. Like, things are... Things are starting to add up. I, I, I did mention as well, I am adopted. There is a... Who knows? Maybe, like, we're long-lost brothers. Like, it, it's a possibility. It's a possibility, you know? <laughs> Just admit it. Who's the clone? Uh, I'm actually watching Invincible at the moment. Well, the second season of Invincible. And obviously, we've got the clones in there. So that's just ringing so true. I'm literally just playing that in the in the voice of the uh, the person from Invincible. You know, the big blue dude who clones himself. <laughs> You're the clone. <laughs> Love it. Uh, I think it was on Twitch. Across the game, Devaverse. <laughs> literally. <laughs> We're actually from we're actually the same person, just from different like dimensions. One of us accidentally slipped into this reality somehow. Don't know how it happened. Um, you know, probably never will. But here we are. <laughs> it is it is kind of crazy. It is kind of crazy. Um, I think I've I think I've already just like I, I think I've already talked about how old I am. I think in like one of the last streams I spoke about how old I am. Probably, yeah. I mean, I'm 25. Like I I just feel old. Like, it's mad. Like, I feel like I'm pretty... Like, I'm old but young at the same time. It's crazy. Um, One of you thinks he's Dutch when he's actually a Scot. <laughs> I mean, I'm technically 12% Scandinavian as well. So, you know, there's that. Yeah, I'm 12% Viking. Because um, I did a... My, my partner got me a... Uh, you know, one of those My Heritage DNA tests. Obviously, with me being adopted, I was just like, oh, I'd be interested to see kind of what my heritage is. 12% Scandinavian. Hell yes. Uh, the rest was like English, Scottish, and Irish, which, you know, makes sense. Um, my... Any ideas on what the villain of the game is going to be? Uh, yes... I'm not going to talk about that, though. <laughs> um, like, how... Because it, it's a it's big spoiler, and it's not something that I've, like, fully fleshed out. But... It's unconventional. Let me put it that way. Like, there isn't a big bad in this game. Uh, I'm just going to preface this with... This is all subject to change... All that kind of stuff. Don't take this at face value. But it's I'm not I'm not gonna be spoiling it, but it is an unconventional. It's not gonna be like there is a big bad guy that you need to go and kill. That's not that's not what's gonna be in this game. But there is like there is a big bad, but there isn't a big bad. But I can't really talk about it without like giving it away, and I don't want to give it away. Um but yeah, it's unconventional. It's unconventional. Um, but I think it's really cool. Like, there are going to be some big twists in this game. Big twists. And they are... They're pretty exciting. I think it's cool. Everyone that I have spoken to about, like, what the overarching narrative of this game is going to be is... um. Everyone seems to really like it. Because it's different. Um... But we'll see. We'll see. It's all subject to change. It could change. There will be bad guys. And as I mentioned in the last stream, there there are um there is an overarching storyline, but then each zone on each segment of the of the game is gonna have its own kind of its own narrative, its own quest lines, its own overarching story as well. Um so within some of those like sub stories, there will be like, oh, go and ultimately kill this guy or get this thing, defeat this person to blah 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 so with it may not be the main overarching story there is a big bad that's destroying everything but there are going to be multiple different storylines where one of those storylines may have a big bad uh i'm gonna take a 30 minutes break bye i will see you very soon um i'm not 100 sure if i'm gonna be streaming for another 30 minutes but if i am hopefully i'll see you very soon thank you for coming really appreciate it um and yeah we'll see you very soon um but yeah i don't really want to go into it all too much because I, I know me i'm gonna accidentally spoil something and i don't want to do that so <laughs> yeah that's what that's what i'll say it's unconventional 
there will be some overarching story that isn't like there is a big bad go defeat it but within some sub stories there'll be something along those lines um my goal is to make everyone believe you're a scott diner <laughs> my family has literally lived in the netherlands for dozens of generations hundreds of years <laughs> yeah not scott not scott like, it is what it is the man is not a scotsman uh yeah i'm definitely just like english irish scottish for the most part like i i am british which i was really upset about i really wanted to because like i always thought i had a bit of italian in me um but no no i get scandinavian which don't get me wrong is really cool as well but i really wish it was a bit more than 12 percent <laughs> i want to be a bit more than 12 percent viking um but yeah I love how we still do no work, by the way. <laughs> it never happens. Um, all right. Now that's a lie. We we did we did set up the portal, so we do have that. Um, let's set up at least the main kind of area, right? So let's let's open this up. Ooh. Let's open this back up. Um, and we'll we'll save this and we'll close this down as well. All right. So this area will ultimately turn into this now the issue i have the main issue i'm gonna have to kind of contend with here is the fact that this is a pretty vertical room and this background sprite is not vertical so i mean ultimately one thing we did say was going to make this bigger so that will help out a lot um the same with kind of these these can probably be like staggered a little bit more uh, uh, as such um like that um and if we play this we'll be able to run around and just get a gist as to what that's going to look like um kind of like that which i think is going to be fine with regards to the the verticality yeah as long as like when you get to the top you're not like on top of the mountain with regards to the parallax i think that's going to be fine and i mean i guess one thing we can do to kind of aid with that is just make this bigger and send it further back right so we could set this to be like a z value of 10 now i know it looks like nothing much has happened there but we've set it further back in the um was my mouse not working again yeah my mouse stopped working amazing has that fixed it Okay, that's fixed it. Um, it doesn't look like it's changed much, but we've offset it further back. Um, so you can see it was at 5. Now it's at 10. Unironically, that makes a big difference. As I'll be able to show you here. So, because it's further back, it's going to move less from the perspective of the camera. So you can see as I move from like left to right, that background image, you can see it a little bit in the background here that moves less compared to all the other objects in the foreground the further back something is the less it will move from your perspective um as the player so by setting that to be further back and increasing the scale the image itself doesn't look any different but it will move less um so that's one way to kind of get around the whole i don't want to be able to like be on top of the mountain kind of deal just by offsetting it like that um and again we can come in and just kind of move it up a little bit more as well to kind of help that okay uh my man's giving physics lessons as well true chad <laughs> um i don't think it's physics i think is it physics would this count would this technically count as physics i don't know um i think this is more an art lesson more than anything ironically enough because it's about perspective and that kind of stuff because it, it's it's like one point perspective with um the the point being the camera i mean you can literally see the perspective of the, the camera from what you, what you can actually see like you can see it there like depending on the perspective that you look at um i don't know i think it's more an art lesson uh let's turn off the gizmos here just so we can see a bit clearer uh but yeah either way we're an educational channel my man educational we're here to teach and impart wisdom what very little wisdom I have, but wisdom, nevertheless. Wisdom, nevertheless. 
Um, so yeah, we are going to be coming up here. So, what do we want this room to teach the player? Right. So this room teaches the player to jump, attack, and um, potentially mantle. This room teaches the player that secret rooms exist. And ultimately, if you continue on, you'll be able to learn about spikes and that kind of stuff. So far, we've met the we've met the fox enemy and we've met the the ghoul enemy, which are both present in here. I think this room, especially with it being a bit more vertical, is to teach the player about certain platforming challenges. I think this should have a have a focus on platforming elements. That doesn't necessarily mean like we're going to have like hard platforming, but there will be some semblance of like jumping puzzle-ish. Um, basically ensuring that we're teaching the player that verticality is the thing. And we might introduce a new enemy in the way of like a flying bird or something like that. Um, so you have to avoid it by using the jumping and platforming elements. So I think that's going to be the main focus of this. Make use of the, the verticality of the room. Um, before we go back into another heavily horizontal room, which is broad, open-spaced. Um, and this room is probably going to teach the player of different branching paths. So this room is probably going to be split up into multiple areas. So it'll be like a little floating island here. The player can choose to go up or down. For the most part, you'll you'll still end up here. Um, but it'll incentivize backtracking. In a way. Um, maybe we have it set up so ultimately you have to go this way, but there's like a barricade, so you have to come this way, flip a switch, and then you'll be able to, to go back round, so it'll showcase the backtracking elements of the game, and also that there are interactive objects that interact with the environment. So I think that's going to be the plan for this room, and we'll have plenty of space to do it, so we can have like two different branching paths. So it's teaching multiple things, it's about in-game environmental aspects, but also about branching paths and backtracking so i think that'll be the main focus for this this area um and then we can worry about this area later <laughs> um i'm just trying to think of the different things that like as a tutorial i want to teach the player not as in like the me mechanical but like the, the elements of the game backtracking metroidvania is a big part of that verticality and platforming yeah uh, maybe this one, because I have a bit more focus on, like, a little bit more combat. So, maybe add, like, a slightly more difficult encounter. Or, this is going to be where we have, like, maybe our first... Um, maybe this is where we get the heal ability. Because uh, the heal ability... At the beginning of the game, you're going to have the roll, which you're going to have by baseline. So, maybe this room, we showcase the rolling ability. Um, in to, to some degree. Like, you'll possibly, hopefully, learn about that, like, within these rooms where you've got the, the, the fighting... But if we've got, like, this is tutorializing basics, like, jumping, attacking. This is showcasing, like, different hidden secrets and that kind of stuff. This is showcasing verticality and platforming. This is showcasing, like, backtracking and environmental engagement. This one can showcase... Maybe a bit more combat and usage of like iframes and things like that. Maybe I could have like a slightly lower bit that you can roll under, but you can't um, just walk past something, something along those lines, maybe. Um, maybe something like that. Maybe have some kind of like wall that like you can't walk, walk past, but you're able to use your invulnerability. Or if you attack this wall. Um, it damages you, but if you use your roll, you use the invulnerability flames, you're able to get past it. And that can introduce a new object type that we're able to use in like other places, like here or here, for example. Uh, and because you've learned it, and it's a forced thing that you have to go past, unless, again, you're a seasoned Metroidvania player and you can get past this point. But if you're able to get through this ability and use like pogoing, you probably will inherently just understand mechanics like this, so you don't need to face it here. And the same goes for these kind of aspects. If you're if you're able to get through this point using like advanced Metroid beta techniques, you don't really need to learn these components of the game design or like level design because you will know them already. Um, and then this area is going to be the first kind of like campsite, like the 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 main hub. This is where you'll have your first campsite. So you'll learn about checkpoints in this one. 
you'll learn about npcs and you'll you'll gain your first knowledge of like this is an objective to aim towards which is ultimately going to be get here um and that basically concludes, concludes the tutorial area. This is the tutorial bit. Um, so I feel like that's a decent plan. I feel like that's a decent plan. So this one is going to have a focus on verticality and platforming. Yeah. Um, as far as I know, perspective was one of those math subjects here. True, actually. Yeah. Um, they changed. Uh, I guess it, it, it is the same kind of thing. Like it's maths, physics. But yeah. Um, makes a dull your idea. Makes so much sense, really. That's a brilliant plan. Thank you. Um, again, all subjects to change, but we'll see how it feels. Because the thing is, I'll, I'll map bits out. Um, I'll play around, see if it feels like I'm actively learning. I'll give it to my partner and then basically ask her to just tell me what she thinks she's learned while she's played this section. Go off that. I'll give it to a couple of the people. Uh, basically say, what have you learned from this? Um, what do you know? What is your knowledge base, essentially? And then see if it's accomplishing what I want to accomplish. And then reevaluate, test it, reevaluate it, test it. And then I'll make it pretty. Um, like, that's the thing. I don't really, I, I don't go into making levels pretty until, like, pretty late on. Um, like, for the most part, it, it's like, it's finding that tricky balance, right? Because for my devlogs and that kind of stuff, and for, for showcasing to the community, and being that kind of, like, visual, having that kind of visual aid and making things pretty, I kind of need to do that. So that people are actually even interested in my game as a concept. Because people aren't going to look at something that isn't pretty. You know, they're not going to be interested. If it's just a, if, if I like showed this in a short, people are going to be like, that looks bad. They're not going to follow along. Um, so I kind of like half need to make it pretty while also like not. So it's like, it's tricky to find out. I'm actually just going to move this onto my second monitor just so I can like have a look at it while I'm, while I'm setting these bits out. Um, I'll keep the chat up open in this separate channel though. Um, okay. So let's sketch out the basic shapes here. Um, I'm going to open up the other two scenes. Uh, just so we have those for, for context and scene one. I need to change the name of this one. Uh, just so we can see where, where we kind of need to line certain things up. Okay. Um, so this, this scene, I've got actually here actually takes it out over here so it's actually a very large scene uh, let me just turn the lighting off so i can see everything suddenly everything looks like trash <laughs> nice um okay so i mean the first thing i need to do really looking at this is i can just like shave this down quite a lot um let me double check on the cameras where the camera bounds are for this room uh yeah so i can just shave this top layer off here cool um so let's go here uh go to the environment uh ground ground and i can just like shave this because you're not gonna see it anyway because the camera bounds don't let you see it and it'll just allow me to actually like see what i'm working with a bit more accurately as well um so first things first looking at this this diagram i've got going on this room is long and thin and then expands into the big verticality bit um that this room is going to be huge when you think about that because again we, if we look at the comparison this room here is this and this is quite long so looking at the sketch like roughly speaking if I, uh, I'll just close these down just so I don't end up drawing in the wrong one. Um, looking at these sketches, uh, uh, control Y, close this down. Um, if I go here, delete this. This room is going to be roughly like this like this um let's say like we'll just bring this out a little bit like like that then this grows up into being something along the, let's say just yay high for now um this room comes out to be like this big as such like, that's a big room when you compare it to the size of some of the other ones we've got. 
That's a big room. I feel like restarting game dev. I've got some exams that I've got to get rid of first, though. Yeah, I do not envy you there. I do not envy you there. Um, I really miss learning, though. Um, but personally, I always felt exams were a really bad way to kind of, like, gauge someone's, like, abilities. Like, me, like, as far, like, for me, my perspective has always been, like, exams are just a memory game. Like, I have a, I have a good memory, which kind of just meant I was good at exams. But, if you actually tested me practically on that knowledge, it was like, eh, it wasn't as good. But I was good at memorizing stuff, so I was good at exams and got good grades. Um, but, like, it... Like, I feel like coursework and doing coursework over exams is just a better way to gauge someone's, like, knowledge and experience. Right? Anyone can memorize a bunch of equations and apply that, and, like, apply that, like, memorization in the concept of an exam. You just have to memorize things for the most part. Whereas if you, like, do coursework, you're actively, over the course of your learning, applying your knowledge contextually on what you're doing in the context of like a real world problem or solution and, and you're creating a solution to that problem i feel like coursework is just a much better gauge of like how someone's performing but that's just me personally i just i just don't like exams as a concept and that's coming from someone who's like who I, I i got good grades like i was good in school like i did well using it uh, uh, with exams being like the context of my like academic gauging the like how much i've learned i don't think exams are a good way to kind of gauge how much someone's learned and how they're actually performing i think it's really bad i think it's a bit flawed um but then again i at the end of the day i have no authority on this like topic whatsoever it is just my personal opinion um yeah but you can't figure out specific detail grades to put people in order though um that, that's the thing that's exactly the thing right everything is subjective right you can gauge how successful someone's outcome is or how, how successful someone's like um solution to a problem is like that you can do that like let's say you're building a house right let's let's apply this to a real world situation right you're building a house you can look at like three or four different houses or 30 houses. let's take a classroom of people you can look at 30 houses and you can order them in like how how good you think they are if you've got a brief that says i want a five store i want like a two-story house three bedrooms they need to be this size this kind of design that kind of stuff right and then i show you 30 different houses you're going to be able to put them in an order of like well this is has exactly what i wanted this doesn't have exactly what i wanted this one is a five-story house with only one bedroom that's not what i asked for so that goes right at the bottom or like whatever but it's actually really designed really well so i'll bump it up a little bit you you would be able to put those houses in an order of which like you enjoy them or like uh, in an in an order of like this is exactly what i wanted this is what i asked for and it, it is to a good quality you know you're able to do that uh, it'd be the same thing for like coursework um you, you'd be comparing them to you'd be comparing other students work or their assessments to each other um whereas like and even that i kind of disagree with i think school should focus more on collaboration than, co than than competition to be perfectly honest um i think the whole idea of like competition it's needed to a certain degree but basically saying that like oh well like you're not good at maths so you're going to fail in life you know it's like not true really and also it's putting like a 16 year old at a point where they like if you don't perform now you're going to screw up the rest of your life that's a hell of a lot of pressure for a 16 year old and especially choosing like the stuff you're going to do for the rest of your life it's kind of dictated by like what subjects you choose and how you perform at that age like jesus i'm 25 and i hardly know what i'm like going to be doing for the rest of my life you know um but it wouldn't be objective especially for a nationwide or an international test i, I mean you, you could argue the same now like if you're writing an essay like the performance of someone's essay is subjective you know one person might think it's really well written 
and it's got some great points whereas another person might read the exact same essay um and and think differently um it's more the context of how you apply your learning that i'm talking about um rather than like the 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 test itself in a way though like yeah i think it should just be assessed like you should have access to unlimited resources when i when you are performing your test because in the real world as well you will have access to the internet everything in it all that kind of stuff um so yeah it's 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 weird it was like when i don't know if i i think it's no longer a thing anymore but like back in the day when i when i was like doing my maths a levels and stuff it was like we had a calculator and a non-calculator test and their entire point was like well you're not always gonna have a calculator on you don't i don't i it's right here like i think i think that's kind of been abolished now though i'm not, I'm not 100 sure i think it depends where you go um but like everyone has access to a calculator these days at all times so it's like kind of defeats the object like if i'm going to be doing a, a test on maths i should have access to everything that in the real world i will i will have access to you know but again as you say we have no authority so it's not like uh, i'm just kind of voicing my opinions i've always just disagreed i think like yeah i think there should be more of a focus on collaboration than competition within schools it's kind of it's kind of like what finland do um and their school system is great um i don't know pitting people against each other i don't think it's the most healthy healthy thing to be doing for young minds like it like having competition to some degree is always like a healthy thing but at the same time i think when that's the only goal i don't know i personally just disagree with it a bit i i worked a lot I, I, i'm just talking again from experience i did a year of a levels where it was heavily focused on exams and then i did two years where it was heavily coursework based and i performed a hell of a lot better when it came to doing the coursework side of things just because it worked better for the like how i i i learned and generally across the board in at least for my year group people performed a lot better so i don't know it's all about context um well wouldn't you think instead of doing what normal um doing what's above normal would allow you to do above normal again it just depends on your context like if you think it like the whole point of this this conversation kind of stems from the fact that like exams i don't feel are an accurate representation of what you know it's an accurate representation of what you can remember you know like if i like if take maths for example if i struggle memorizing things i'm going to do really bad in a maths exam because i have to memorize all these formulas and all that kind of stuff if I have all the formulas in front of me, and I personally know how to apply those formulas, which is more important. It's more important to know how to apply those formulas than it is to remember what they are, because I could just Google what the formula is. If I don't know how to apply that knowledge, it doesn't matter about me having it. But if I can apply that knowledge, that makes me above normal, if that makes sense. But in the context of an exam, if I don't remember, if I can't memorize those formulas, that's the more important part. Because if I if I don't have that in front of me, as far as the exam examining board is like concerned, if I can't remember what they are in the first place, I have failed. Even though if I had them in front of me, I would be able to apply them and I would probably ace that. So it depends on the context. If I had access to that information, which in the real world, I would always have... Does it not make more sense? Would it not be deemed that I am not better, but like, because that's not really the the right word. But in, I guess in the context of this, like being better than other students in the context of like, I am able to do this better. That just makes more sense to me. Apply, like the application of knowledge is so much more, Im more important than the ability to memorize it in most cases don't get me wrong there are some cases where like being able to memorize isn't it and that's not me disregarding memorization as like an important skill it's very important to be able to like memorize things and that kind of stuff i'm just saying like every subject where you have to have an exam 
is just a memory game. You have to remember stuff. And you're being assessed on your ability to memorize stuff rather than your ability to apply the knowledge you have learned. And I just think it's more important that sword is better applying knowledge rather than memorizing it. So yeah. That's just my opinion though. Like, I know that my, my logic in some in some regards is completely flawed though as well. And I, I accept that. And I'm open to like counter. I That's the thing. I love to debate. I absolutely love to debate things. I love hearing other people's opinions. And I am very open to like changing my opinions on a lot of things. Um... But yeah, like, I just, I enjoy debating and hearing other people's stuff. Debating is so fun. Exactly. Like, I just love hearing other people's opinions and understanding why they have come to that conclusion. Um, and I, I, I actually love being proved wrong in a lot of cases as well. I think it's just fun. It's fun. Uh, maybe that's why I tried in, why they tried in IGCSE. When I entered the IGCSE chemistry exam, for example, they gave us a periodic table calculator and it was good. I still did bad though. I mean, yeah, exactly. I think things have changed a lot. Like, they, like don't get me wrong, I'm coming from a position from, like, everything that I'm talking about now was relevant, like, eight to ten years ago. I'm not going to comment on what the education system, like, is now because I don't know things could have changed and they probably have um i would hope for the better um i'm just talking like when i was growing up and when i was going through my gcses and a levels you had to memorize stuff you had to learn you did not get to take a cheat sheet in with you you did not get to take your periodic table you did not get a calculator for some exams you just had to memorize stuff um and i i disagreed with that that might have changed now though i don't know uh, hey guys, uh, do you like debating stuff as well? Come to Discord. We have a good <laughs> summer. I just need to hire you as like a Discord community manager or something, because you honestly do like more promotion, and you engage more in the Discord community than I do. <laughs> I should just make you a mod or something or some kind of admin, because <laughs> you do so like I I haven't even comprehended like oh yeah there are people in the chat let's like let's invite them to the Discord server. But you're on it. You've done it like every every live stream. <laughs> you're on top. You're you're on it. I'm just not. Have I accidentally just drawn a penis? Let, let's delete that. I don't want to accidentally draw penises in my game. Um, but yeah, we do have a have an engaging Discord community full of great people. Uh, you should all definitely come along and uh, and uh, join in. I will post a link in the chat now. If you're not already in the server, do come along. It's a great place to chat with people, showcase your work, get help, get advice, and uh, it's a good place to keep up to date with anything Amber's Tale as well. Woo! Um, but yeah, on this riveting note, uh, why not? Ari Gibson did a lot for Hollow Knight. Ari Gibson did, uh, did it a lot for Hollow Knight. What did... Like, Ari Gibson's the artist, right? Ari Gibson. Let me look at a picture. I just typed in R.O. Gibson. Ari Gibson. Yeah, they're the artists, aren't they? Yeah. Um, yeah, they did a lot of stuff for... The, did they do a lot of stuff for the promotion? Do you mean? Because to be fair, I, I actually came to Hollow Knight pretty late. Because I wasn't around for the Kickstarter or anything like that. I'm a big fanboy now. I can't wait for Silk Song if and when it ever comes out. But I don't really know the nuances of like how they actually promoted stuff and that kind of to that kind of degree. I really should look into it to be honest. Um, now nah, you're doing the actual job. You do that. I do this. <laughs> Everyone <laughs> does this job a little bit. This is true. This is true. No, you you're, you're very good. I I really do appreciate what you do as well, Sandman. You uh you keep the server going. It's really good. I really appreciate it. Uh, I actually wanted to make a game in Godot, but I don't think I have enough brain cells. Plus, I don't have a job yet, so I can't buy high-end laptop and desktop. I, I was actually speaking about this earlier. I don't know if you were in the chat at the time. You don't need that. Godot can run very, very efficiently on a really low-end laptop. Um, apparently, it turns out it can even run on an Android phone. Um, you don't need a very powerful laptop to, to run something like Godot. You can make a game. Um, and you don't actually even need that many brain cells. Um, I mean, look at me. I'm making a game. 
like i'm i'm like i'm, I'm kind of smart but like i don't know i'm not like i, I wouldn't say i i don't really see myself as like an intellectual i make some very dumb th i do some very dumb shit constantly like if i can make a game you could definitely make a game like yeah you don't need that many brain cells <laughs> Um, and yeah, Godot can run on Android, so you don't even need a laptop in the first place. You could unironically make an entire game on your phone. For the phone. Like, that's hilarious. <laughs> don't talk about yourself like that. You're a smart guy. I, I, I know. But like, I'm also like, I'm not the smartest guy in the room. I'm like, and that's not even like a, that's not even me degrading myself in a way. Like, I'm, I'm just like, realistic. Like, I'm in the grand scheme of things like i'm probably like pretty average like i'm a pretty average guy like i'm not the best at what i do like if like any any old person can make can make a game any old person can do what i do because if i can do it you can do it like it's just a case of being consistent and learning like it's taken me four or five years to get to the point where i am now like people can get to this stage a lot quicker than i did I, I did some, like, stupid stuff when learning game dev and, like, took the wrong path and that kind of stuff. That's not even me degrading myself. It's me just being a realist. And that's not a bad thing. Um, I have a laptop that I'm watching this now, but it's so bad I can't run most games. You don't need to be able to run most games. Because remember as well, you, um, especially if, especially Godot. Like, running Unity or Unreal, you, like, especially Unreal, yeah, that's probably unrealistic. But on Godot, if you're willing to learn that game engine, it's a very lightweight game engine. Especially if you're doing something 2D, like, it, you'd be surprised what you can get away with. Especially when you're just learning, because you don't need, to make a good, fun game, you don't need good graphics. You do not need good gaf graphics to make a fun game. I mean, look at Undertale, right? I always bring up Undertale. Like, don't get me wrong, Undertale is a good looking game. It's a stylistic choice, but like there isn't much going on in that game visually. You know, it's like eight, is it eight bit? I'm pretty sure it's eight bit. Like, and that is probably like one of the best narrative games there is out there from an indie creator. It's a very, very good gameplay. Um, like, does it's a very well designed and like narrated game. But it doesn't look great. Like, it does. It's, it's a very stylistic game. But, like, you wouldn't look at, like, Undertale and be like, this game is, like, chef's kiss beautiful. Because it's not. Like, it uses, it utilizes what it's got very, very well. Um, but it's not, like, professional quality assets, artwork, all that kind of stuff. Um, I can hear Jonas say, I can run a Godot on my toes. Honestly, like, you, you can run Godot on anything. It's so lightweight. I would just say, like, give it a go. Like, give it a go. If it doesn't work, fair enough. You know. Um, but, like, try running a dough. L literally, like, load up a YouTube tutorial. Like, step by step. Follow along in Godot. There's loads of them out there. Like, just try it and see if it works. Because you'd be surprised. Um, I think you'd be perfect. I think you'd be perfectly fine doing it um it's okay to, it's okay to say undertale is the ugliest popular game made it's still ugly yeah exactly like i don't want to feel i don't want to come across like i'm shitting on undertale because i'm not it's a really really well designed game and it's a really really good game um but i don't think it's like visually that great um but that's that's my subjective opinion yeah foods you want foods okay we'll get food soon i do need to go check on that actually um i need to put some rice on um, for the stew and give the stew a bit of a turn. Hold on. Yeah. We were going to put the pastry, but you want it for your, your desserts instead. Mm. I don't know if that would work, actually, to be if, fair. If. Are you sure? Fair enough. I'll let you be the gauge of that. I'll let you be the gauge of that. Uh, no, as far as uh, uh, Undertale is... I don't think it's free. Uh, but it's it's not expensive. I'm not gonna lie. Um, let me double check. Undertale. If I spelt it correctly, Undertale 
It is currently on sale for two pounds and nine pence on Steam. So, uh, yeah. I mean, Undertale is just a like if you want to like see what you're able to get away with, like honestly, just like take the two pound loss. <laughs> uh, play Undertale. It's a really good game. Give it a go. Um, you can see how like how little graphics can matter, you know, as long as you've got a good like mechanically engaging game or a good narrative like generally speaking if you want to optimize your chances of a game being popular you want a good mechanical hook a good visual hook and a good story hook you want that, like trilogy you want those three things um but you don't need all of those things for your game to be successful or for a game like if you're just doing it hobbyist you don't need to like achieve all those things just copy something else especially when you're learning and i, I actually recommend when you're learning just copy something like follow tutorials and go go with it um, because you'll learn more from copying other people than trying to be original, especially when you're learning, for sure. Um, but yeah, 100%, I'd say, like, give it a go. Give it a go. I have basic programmer, uh, basic platformer movement script, but I've always been scared to learn code or art. If you're always scared, you're never going to do it. Like, at the end of the day, like, you've got to realize that programming and art and all that, and even that, any aspect of these, they're all skills, in order to learn them, you have to get dedicate time towards them. You know? You're never going to get better if you don't start. And you're going to suck at the beginning, and that's fine. Everyone does. You'd be surprised how quickly you can pick up these things. As long as you are consistent, and, like, you, you actually say, like, I'm going to dedicate, like, 20 minutes a day. 20 minutes a day. That's, like, nothing. Like, you don't even have to do that. You can say, like two hours a week to learning programming or to learning art you'd be surprised how quickly and how much you can pick up in that short of time but at the end of the day you need to be doing it to get better like if you start now in a year's time you will you will like look back at it today and be like i'm so glad i started because you will be able to make art you will be able to program like don't start you won't learn just just do it just do it stop saying like you'll do it later on or oh, it's going to be hard or oh i'm not going to be very good at it because you're not going to be good very good at it to start but you'll only get good at it if you do it you know you got to chase your dreams chase them you'll eventually do it like that again they're skills they're not something that you're just naturally good at like the more you do it the better you will get like regardless like, you look at some of the best artists out there. Like, you look at some, like, even on TikTok or whatever. You can, you can literally Google right now, like, some random TikToks of, like, art progression. You know? Like, you would be surprised. Like, all the, a lot of these assets in here, that in my game. And I think my game looks pretty, pretty nice. My game looks nice, right? They're made by Pen USB Mike. Pen, uh, Pen USB Mike. For the most part and hannah hannah um but a lot of it is made by penny USB mike i'm gonna show you their instagram because they recently did an art check and they've been doing they don't do art full time they've got another job they, they do this in their spare time um let me show you their before and after because if this doesn't like get you inspired i don't i i don't know what will um i just need to find it on their on their feed real quick Where are we? Turns out it was a bit further back than I remember. Um, it's a lot further back than I remember. Maybe they just did it in a story, potentially. I'm not 100%. Maybe they did. It's starting to look like... Um, let me scroll back up to the top real quick. Because they literally did like an art check where they showed their progress. What Like the same sprite. They made the same sprite like two years ago and then like today kind of thing. And it's black and white, the difference, you know? It's like, it's crazy. Oh, here's one. Here's one example, right? Here. This is like two, three years worth of progress. 
like don't, this is by no means bad this is pretty good like and i remember i i followed penny Street mike for for years like i remember when he when he brought this sprite pack out because i used it for one of my uni projects like this is by no means bad it's actually very good but then when you compare it to this this is objectively a lot better and it just goes to show just time practice practice be consistent learn every day and just enjoy what you're doing if you enjoy it and you actually do it you will get better and you will you will learn and you will you will look back in two years time and be like damn i am so glad i started on that day because it got me where i am now if you don't start today in a, or you don't start until years from now you're going to look back in a year and be like god i wish it started a year ago i'd lo i'd know so much by now just start just do it stop procrastinating just chase your dreams go for it um what's some quick tutorials like black thumb prod black thumb prod's great for it yeah like unironically like if you if you have money to like sink into like tutorials and courses i i do recommend black thumb prod's like tutorial or their their course it is paid um you will probably learn things quicker if you get a paid course um because it will be like structured you will have that structured learning environment especially from someone like blackthorn prod like they have one i think it's like 600 dollars or something but if you wait until like new year's it's probably gonna be like a 50 percent sale or something like that um but like yeah like you will learn quicker following a course generally speaking depends on the course um i'd probably about to blackthorn prod myself um I'm planning to get their course myself like next year once i've got a bit of expendable income for context like i'm going to be sinking that 600 pound because i want to to learn multiplayer and i want to learn and be a bit more involved in the artwork and that kind of side of things um so i'm gonna be doing that because i know i will get better quicker by following a, a structured course rather than tutorials but i got to where i am now exclusively following tutorials so you can do it um as for code, you wouldn't believe how easy GG script is in Godot. Exactly. Um, depending on the the like, you can also learn C sharp, but I'd, I'd start with GG script to start off with for sure first. Um, but yeah, you'll pick it up pretty pretty quickly. My idea is this city type hardcore Metroidvania. <coughs> exactly, you can make that pretty easily. Like you break that down to the fundamentals of what you actually need. You need player movement. You need basic environment. With, um, by basic environment i mean you can make a basic tile map of like you can make it very very simple you can use just blocks you could have a black sprite a white sprite and some you could have like like five or five or six like white pixel black pixel and some various shades of gray that that can be your art you can make that as your stylized choice and you can make that game with very few scripts minimal art and you can make that. You know? I know. I, my man is following the chat with like 50%, 15 minutes latency. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of went on like 15 minute rent, to be fair. I'm going to catch up now, though. Preach, brother. You sent some great stuff, yeah. Uh, also, I suggest starting with some basic stuff. Learn, learn the job. Then working on your dream game. Yeah, exactly. Start small. Kiss. Keep it simple, stupid. Just keep things simple. Learn little bits here and there, uh, and, and go from there. Um, I'm gonna like speed. I'm gonna speed run through the chat. Um, yeah, saying stuff is hard is a bad thing in my opinion. At least nothing. Yeah, exactly. Um, like you can ex you can uh, you can accept that something is hard, but if you're not gonna do something about it, then like <laughs> quit complaining. You know, um, like thing things are things are hard, but like if you're putting up barriers yourself and that's the only thing that's stopping you. I'm not, I'm not saying like quit complaining like oh blah blah because there are things that some people can't change and I accept that. But if the only thing stopping you like in this context, the only thing stopping you from learning to program is you thinking that it's hard and it's going to be hard work. Like stop thinking that. Just just do it. You will you will get better. Um and you you will you will learn quickly but you need to you need to do it in order to get there i'm back forgotten hello hello good to see you welcome back um you'll you'll look back in two years and say man i'm good exactly exactly you're gonna be good you're gonna look back you're gonna be like yeah i'm so glad i started uh i mean that how do how how i do art video on youtube by black thumb prod is super simple site yeah like black thumb prod is really good for both art and like 
and generally just um programming especially programming like i'd start with blackthorn prod to start no that's a lie i'd probably start with brackies because brackies are pr pr very beginner friendly once you've got the general concept of that well then again brackies and, and blackthorn prod are like c sharp and unity if you're working with godot i don't know any good godot creators because i don't really follow along with it um Yeah, I'm probably not the best person to ask about this kind of stuff. Um, Godot tutorial. Because if you're going to be learning GZ script, that's probably a different story. Um, oh, GD Quest. GD Quest is good. I've heard good things about them. They have a, like, don't get me wrong, it's, uh, it looks like it's like two years old, the little video series where they make a basic platformer. Um, but I think that would probably be a good place to start. I've heard good things about GD Quest. Um, that's probably a good place to start. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. If you're like me, you'd rather use assets made by yourself. Yeah, like I'm kind of the I'm kind of like I don't mind using other people's assets. I I actually personally prefer it because art isn't something I necessarily enjoy doing. So I I'm not going to invest into learning art myself all that hard because it's not something i necessarily enjoy doing so i'm not gonna bother i'd rather focus on improving skills and things that i enjoy doing which is like the programming and the design aspects of things so yeah um focus like give everything a go and you need a basic understanding of art um but you don't need to be good at it if you don't enjoy it um yeah just kind of like focus like try a bit of everything and then focus on the bits that you enjoy and you feel like you're good at um yeah man is following the chat with 15 minutes late and say literally prototyping is great and honestly i'd like don't even start making like loads of polished like finished games like literally just prototype a bunch of stuff like make 15 different prototypes then try and bring everything together and like make a game um i make it a really crappy game as well don't make it a good game like it, it's gonna be crappy everything you make at the beginning is going to be bad retrospectively like i don't think anyone has ever like loaded up unity or like Godot, and the first thing they've ever created be like beautiful it's, it's not going to be um you get good at that again with practice i look at some of the stuff the, the first stuff i made it was bad I, like, I recently looked at some of my first bits of uni work, which is, like, my first experience coding, and I, like, <laughs> I was, I was shocked. Old Tom was, like, bad at programming. <laughs> it was, it was bad. But now I look at it, I'm just like, yeah, I know what I'm doing now, for the most part. But I am still very much learning. I'm learning every day. You're going to be constantly learning. Um, hey, Khan, hello, hello. Yeah, I'm a bit delayed catching up to everything, so I do apologize um god am i watching 30 minutes behind literally no i'm just really bad i just like go on tangents and like i i, I want to read everything i don't want to skip over people's comments so it just takes a while to get through everything uh um <laughs> at this rate i might go back to godot yeah it could be worth it you never know godot is a pretty good lightweight engine there that, don't get me wrong like it depends on what you want to do. I think if you're a beginner, like for beginners, I think personally, I'm always like, I'm just going to recommend, I, I, as a Unity user, I would still actively recommend Godot for beginners. Because um, the thing is, most game engines, for the most part, function the same. So if you learn Godot, and then later on you decide to move over to Unity, you'll pick Unity up a pretty quick anyway. You'll have to learn C Sharp, but again, if you've learned GD Script, the principles of what you're doing like they cross over there's a lot of crossover like if i i've only ever really used unity um but if i wanted to hardcore invest into learning godot i could probably pick that up pretty quickly because a lot of the principles and concepts that i've learned using unity they they carry over like there's a lot of differences and fundamentally they are very different engines but like yeah you're able to you're able to kind of figure quite a lot of stuff out um yeah the video by clear code being 11 hours there are some there are some long boys there are definitely some long boys um but it could be worth watching i don't know i've, I've not seen it myself so i wouldn't be able to vouch um doo -doo 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 -doo. i wonder if dynam is still here <laughs> hilarious yeah 
I think I'm actually going to call it here for the most part, guys. Um, I'm starting to get hungry. I think I think the missus is starting to get a bit hungry as well. Oh, she's giving me the eyes. Yeah, she's hungry. <laughs> so I need to... Uh, I'm going to go get the food, eat up, and then spend some quality time with with my partner. Um, but yeah, if you guys... If you want to keep the conversation going, though, um, join the Discord. Again, I'll just post a little, a little chat there. Join the Discord. Um, continue the chat just because I know the, the, the stream will cancel. If you want to keep talking, I can see you're having a bit of a chat. Join the Discord and... Um, feel free to keep discussing i will still be on the discord as well i'll be typing away uh, and that kind of stuff so if you've got any questions feel free to ask anything there i'll be more than happy to kind of chime in as well um but yeah thank you very much for the stream we actually made a little bit of something so you know what success um i'm probably not gonna scream for a couple days it's probably gonna be after christmas now than an extreme i'm not gonna lie but i'm still gonna be working on the game so who knows you might come next time um, just after Christmas, maybe like Wednesday, Thursday next week, or not Thursday, because apparently streaming on a Thursday is cursed. Um, we might actually have a few, a few different levels for you to see. Um, we'll just have to, we'll, we'll go from there. But yeah, thank you all very much for joining. It's been great speaking to you as always. Great stream. And um, yeah, I will catch you all very, very soon. I hope you have a lovely morning, afternoon, evening, whatever time of day it is. Stay safe and keep learning. Toodaloo.